to just husbands and wives. We're going to touch on husbands and wives because husbands and wives are the core to the family and, and, and how life works. But I want to just get it at a quick. Quick look here. That, that you. I'm just trying to reset my music here. If you got to go, go ahead and go. I don't, I don't want to hold you, but if you want to stick around and listen, stick around and listen. If you know that, I'm, Ken, I'm being honest right now with you and the Lord. I don't know if I can be around them. I can't stand them. Someone mentioned in the chat, they think they're over it. I think Gia said, and then the moment that somebody talks about them or they, they pop up, the animosity comes up again so they let you know that you haven't been delivered you, you're still holding something against them so just let's, let me look here quick and a prayer team already knows what's getting ready to happen uh, for those that need this let me see Lord thank you for Noel uh, so D said I'm just going to call you D because I don't want to mispronounce your name Dia Denaira she said me humble and call on him give me your name if you if you don't mind I don't mind calling you by your pseudo name if you want to protect yourself uh, this is a safe space if you haven't figured that out this is a safe space uh, Rochelle said me I, Shy said I got a number of people and like a number of people that you haven't forgiven Amy a little bit uh, she said, I forgive, but the pain is still there. The trauma is still there. Okay, we can talk about that in a moment. Teresa said, I just don't trust. But do you forgive? That's the question. We're going to get to the trust piece in a moment. We're talking about forgiving people first. And, and understanding what the true word or the true root of forgiveness means. Uh, Sarlo said, "I, my husband, I forgive, but my heart is still so hurt okay so now we're talking about be overcoming betrayal and reconciliation again what i teach based on the bible forgiveness and reconciliation are two separate issues and we'll make sure that you get to both the reconciliation doesn't have to happen immediately it takes time to reconcile it takes time to 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 understand that we're back to where it used to be like we don't automatically just go back to talking to everybody and, and like there needs to be some some conversations, some therapy, some healing, but forgiveness is available. I want to make sure we're on the same page there. So I want to make sure we first touch on all those who said, I have a hard time letting stuff go. Once you're on my bad side, you don't get back on it that easy. I thought I had forgiven, but to be honest, I didn't really. That's fair. I need we need we need this right now. I think I'm over my husband cheating, but I'm not. Thank you for your transparency and your honesty. Sister Roberta, good to see you. I knew you were here. I may have missed your prayers early because it jumped on me, but I, you know I'm praying for you and Henry. She said, me. Mary said, I forgave, but it sometimes it still hurts. And so I'm not going to show you the answer yet, but if it hurts, it's possible that you have not forgiven holy spirit is going to give you some some analogies some parables here in a moment to to get you there tila is that how you did i pronounce it right tilia forgive me if i pronounced it wrong i asked you for your name and then i i butcher it please forgive me d said yes all right so here's where we're going to start just call me day I can I can do that. I can do that. Kristen said me I Robert you 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 have people that you haven't forgiven still hurts a little bit. It's okay. We're getting ready to jump into this. Alicia Shirella Okay. Okay. So let's let's start here. I need you to go back the Holy Spirit's going to help you. Holy Spirit's going to help you. I need you to go to the incident. Robert said, my parents, this is going to be good. 
And if there's multiple issues, multiple people that have offended you, hurt you, trans- trespassed, that you you just have a hard time. I like I never can forgive them for what they did to me. I it's just it was too much. If it's multiple people, then we're gonna go whatever the Lord is putting on your heart to start with. Because there's levels to this, there's layers to this. There's certain people that have hurt you. That the hurt might have been one or two times. It hurts. And the Lord can help you overcome that one pretty easy here in a moment. And then there's other people. It just piles on years after years after years. He mentioned his parents. And it's just it's so much that where do I start? Where do I start with the forgiveness? 1985, 86, 87. 87 89 you know what they did in 91 92 you know the stuff they did to me like they didn't even show up to xyz that still hurts me i don't know if i can forgive them like there's there's a lot there but what we're gonna do right now i hear everybody everybody is struggling with forgiveness is holy spirit i need you i pray to him i need you praying i need you praying for them for me for us here's where we're going to start I need you to go back to that incident. For the record, I'm not a clinically diagnosed therapist. Just just on record. I've counseled for 30 years of ministry. I've prayed. I've done marriage counseling. I've done personal counseling. I guess I'm a life coach, you could say. Uh, At the end of the day, there's some steps that we can take. Because the Holy Spirit has given us the steps. I don't need a book from man to to help us get to where the Lord is at. Does that make sense? So you with me so far? Go to the place, to the incident. Go. Look, I'm gonna take you there. I'm a. I want the Holy Spirit to get to that core memory. I want. I want the Holy Spirit right now to allow you to pause. Close your eyes if you need to. Close your eyes if you can. And think about one of those incidents. Try to go all the way back to the very first incidents or incidents that hurt so bad that unforgiveness, bitterness, criticalness, hostility, frustration began to rise. You got so upset. You got so upset. I need you to go there. Come on, I'm going to help you. Just stay with me. I just just listen for me for a second. My eyes irritate for some reason. I haven't prayed yet. Lord, just heal my eye. Any irritation, whatever's going on in my eye, heal it. Declare victory. Let me assure, let me assure, let me assure. Be healed, be healed, be healed. Forgive me for one moment. Be healed. All right. I'm sorry to hear about your dad doing that to your mom. Hurts. See, there's levels to this. All right. All the way back to birth. Okay. Okay, listen. Listen. Now, I can tell you up front, you have to be open to the Holy Spirit. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to listen. You have to listen. Before we can focus on the person that hurt you, let's let's start with you. Have you got that? Have you got an incident? Did the Lord kind of give you some ideas of where the hurt began? Some some of the the trauma where you just just I just can't forgive. I just it's just too much. That place. The first thing you have to realize is that the Lord was there the whole time. 
that incident that happened, the Lord was there. He saw it all. He was with you. So he's not surprised of what the person did to you. It's very similar to what we did with the whole betrayal. For those who were on with betrayal, I was betrayed by my husband. I was betrayed by my girlfriend. They cheated on me. They crossed the line and it hurts. Well, forgiveness follows the same suit. It may not have been a betrayal, but whatever they said to you, whatever they did to you, it, it released the same chemical, not like one who would grieve. That's what we studied or that's what we talked about when you're betrayed, when you get hurt, it releases the same chemical in your brain as if you lost a loved one. Well, lies or unforgiveness release or bitterness. This is what we're getting to the root of unforgiveness is bitterness. I want you to hear me. Bitterness comes from the root. Stay with me. The same chemical released when someone hates somebody. Very similar chemical. Uh, they've done these studies. You can go look at the stuff online. When you ask my who are you, who who do you not forgive? Who who you never say I'll never I'll I'll never forgive them. I'll never forget it. I'll never forgive them. And that same chemical when you say, well, do you hate somebody? Oh, I hate them. I hate them my whole life. So you're dealing with a spirit. Stay with me. Stay with me. Of hate. Now, you'll never say it out loud. Oh, I don't, I don't hate them. Hate is such a strong word, Brother Ken. But would you admit that you're bitter? You're critical? That, that you don't won't have nothing to do with them. They're in a jail cell right now. You've locked them up. They're doing life right now without parole. That's what we do in society to people that are bad. That's what we do to, in society to people that are that, that are hate, hateful and we, we in turn return that with a punishment. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit pause and allow you to, to process that you're just, you're really, a, it's bitterness. You're not a bitter person. I'm not pointing the finger at you. We don't fight against each other. This isn't personal. Don't, don't take this personal. Although it is personal for you, we fight against flesh and, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities of darkness in high places evil spirits who has who had a, a strategy a plan they were intentional to cause bitterness and hate which is the opposite of patience and love so now that you're there I'm reading comments as I'm speaking just listen to me for a moment just listen ask yourself this question ask yourself this question is God bitter toward you? Does he hate you? And it's a rhetorical question, but it's an honest question to allow your mind to process this whole thing that we're getting ready to go down this path of unforgiveness or, or bitterness, being critical, putting people in jail, never letting them out. When we don't forgive somebody, we're locking them up and we're telling them that you don't get to come out until you meet certain conditions or you'll never come out. I don't care what conditions you meet. You could say, I'm sorry. You could change your life around in my eye. You're doing life because you are so wrong and I'll never, ever release you. You'll never come up for parole. You, you won't even get a reduction in time on good service because it hurts so bad and you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Okay, that's where we are. That's what we've established. That's where, where you understand to be whatever they did. It doesn't even matter. I don't care whether they lied, cheated, didn't treat you right, abused you. Uh, some of you have been hurt in a really bad way. And you say in your heart, I, I just can't bring myself to, to give them a pass, to let, let it go. I can't see them as a different person. It just... They'll always be in my heart 
an evil person. They'll always be. And you know what? They might be an evil person, but let's, let's get to you. This is not about them right now. This is about you. The next part of this, now that you've gone to that place where you've locked them up, that incident, that situation that you said, I'll never forgive them. The question on the table is now, has the father ever been mean to you to a point where he's locked you up, hated you, and he said, I'll never forgive you. See, what we're getting ready to get to is understanding what grace is. We have to define forgiveness. And I, I have an understanding. I have a belief after counseling many people, talking to many people, that we really don't know what forgiveness is. And I'm going to take you there spiritually. I'm going to take you all the way to the cross so we can understand the true definition of forgiveness. And then we can now then bask and swing in his grace. So here's the definition of forgiveness. So here's the definition of grace. It's undeserving favor, merit. It's it's undeserving, undeserved uh, goodness and kindness. Undeserved. Underline that word undeserved. Write that word undeserved. That's forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't you never made a mistake. Forgiveness isn't we're going to go back to the way it was. It's you don't deserve it. I'm going to give it to you anyway. But why would I give somebody something they don't deserve? What kind of person just turns the, the cheek? Who, who just lays down? You think I'm weak? I'm not going to take that. They, uh, uh, I'm, I'm better than that. I'm not that kind of person. Well, my Bible says that blessed are those who are persecuted. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people say all kinds of stuff against you. In the very next couple of verses, he says, forgive me of my sins as I forgive people who sinned against me and then the next couple of verses he says make sure that you forgive because if you don't forgive your father won't forgive you so now now we have to actually deal with scripture the scriptures that people don't want to talk about stay with me just give me a second give me a second as you listen here do you understand that your forgiveness your salvation is based on your belief system of the scripture let me say it a different way let me say it a different way you believe that the lord has forgiven you of all your sin you believe based on scripture based on our christianity based on the gospel the good news that the good news is actually this is the good news this is the, i got good news front page this makes front page every day it should be on the front page of every newspaper here's the good news of the of the day Everything you deserve, everything that we ex that should have received by for wrath has been waived, has has been exonerated, has been torn up. The, the Lord said you you don't ever have to pay ever. You'll never have to pay for your sins. Everything you've ever done, everything you've lied about, all those secret sins that's just between you and the Lord, you'll never pay for them. Even if you continue. <laughs> Even if you continue to do them between now and the time you die, you have an oopsie here or there, you'll never pay for them. I've exonerated you. I've given you a full pass. I've given you full grace, undeserved, undeserved. You've done nothing to deserve this. You will not die and go to hell. You will not experience the second death. You will not burn forever. You, you will not experience eternal separation ever. The, the moment you leave this earth, you you are immediately in my presence. I was I was with you on earth, and you immediately with me in heaven. All be all because you confessed that I was Savior. You repented of your sins and you tried to live the rest of your life for me, undeserved. You don't have to live a perfect life. You you don't have to to be perfect on the commandments. It's undeserved, undeserved. Underline this word. Forgiveness is just undeserved mercy and grace. 
it, it, it's looking at the little kid who's over there acting up and messing up and saying, I'm not going to get you right now. I, I, I could get you. I, I should get you. But I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to give you a chance to do it right. Uh, undeserved is the teacher, the professor who, who knew you flunked, who knew you got the D, but gave you a second chance to do a retake, a third chance to do a retake. Then curved the grade and made sure that you still got to be in the class, an A in the class. It's undeserved. Like you didn't do anything. You, you deserved the grade you got. Uh, un undeserved. Undeserved. Holy Spirit, put that in our spirit right now. The Lord has granted you undeserved grace and mercy. Why is this important? Why are you highlighting undeserved grace and mercy? Because that is the foundation of our gospel. That's the foundation of our belief system. You cannot be a Christian if you do not understand that that is the principle of salvation. Grace. You are saved by grace through faith. You didn't save yourself. You didn't go to enough church to save yourself. You didn't speak in tongues enough to save yourself. You didn't get baptized enough to save yourself. You can't live right enough to save yourself. As long as you keep living, you're going to keep making a mistake here or there. And he says, grace. Every day you wake up, new mercies. You should die for your sins. You know that thing you did last weekend that you said you weren't going to do? You should die. You know what you did in 96 and 98 and 2015? You should die. Yeah, everything we've ever done deserves death. Death. Here's what the Lord is saying as we learn forgiveness. I forgave you. I let it go. And not only did I forgive you, I've now placed inside of you my spirit. You should have my spirit living inside of you. And my spirit is loving. It's patient. It's kind. It's loyal. It's faithful. It has self-control. Uh, my, my spirit that's inside of you is pure. It's lovely. It, sh it should. It should at all times be speaking to you saying mercy grace mercy grace because that's who I am that's my character that's who I am I'm a loving God I, I was patient as, as much as I could be with mankind I could have ended Adam and Eve and started with a new Adam and Eve but I didn't I allowed Noah and that entire generation to go on until the angels came and created an abomination but if the angels hadn't have messed up, I don't have time to teach it. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. If the angels hadn't have come down and, and, and messed that up, I would have allowed for mercy and grace all the way through. Even now, I hadn't come yet. I haven't come to the earth yet. I haven't come to end it all because my mercy says I don't want anyone to perish. Stay with me. Holy Spirit's ministering to you. So this premise of our salvation, this premise of, of, of us being Christians, this narrative of us following our faith. Well, faith in who? Faith in what? Not faith in ourselves. Not faith in some belief system. Faith in God. Faith in YHWH, the Father. But what, what's he about? What's his character? Who is he? He is a loving Father. So much so that he said, I got to figure out a way to make sure all mankind, all mankind has a chance to have a relationship with me. Long story short, you know the answer. He sent his son, the perfect sacrifice. That's his system. We don't get to argue. We don't get to debate it. Blood had to be shed. It had to be perfect blood. He was the lamb. When the lamb shed his blood, it opened up the door for grace. Grace that says, I know that you still cuss and you fuss. Grace that says you still drink and lie. Grace that says you look at things you shouldn't look at. Grace that says that in your own heart, you treat people wrong sometimes. Grace that says you're not a perfect person, but I love you anyway. You can mess up 70 times a day and the Lord said, I'll let it go. I don't care. You believe in me? Do you understand that's, it's that simple? Have mercy on the churches that make this too complicated and the groups who, who cause you to follow law. 
You are saved by grace, not by law. So the moment that you have a bad thought, the moment you do something, the moment that you say something you shouldn't have said, the moment that you get angry, the moment that you get mad, the moment that you just cross the line, grace says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Just don't do it again. Just keep working on yourself. So here's what the Lord is saying right now as we go to phase three of this conversation. Because grace is living inside of you, mercy is living inside of you, hope is living inside of you, patience is living inside of you. It should be the prevailing thought that's living. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8 that we have these two forces living inside of us. They're constantly fighting. They're constantly tugging at one another. Who's going to who's gonna win out? Uh, I, I love that new movie that's getting ready to come out. Disney did it a, a while, uh, two other series ago with the, uh, the little characters that are in the, the, the little girl's head. And they're constantly trying to fight. I don't know the name of the movie. I can't think of it, uh, but but it's a great illustration of the two forces that's inside of us. It's not five. They really could have put like 25 different spirits or emotions or behaviors inside this kid. They can make that franchise go on forever. It's two. Your old nature, the flesh. And your new nature, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that these two are constantly trying to control you, get you to, to behave in a way that they want you to. And that we have to be the ones who yield. We have to be the ones who listen. And the Holy Spirit is constantly telling you patience, 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 love, love, let it go. And your flesh is saying, no, 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 I can't let that go. They don't deserve to let that go. No, they, they need to pay. That, that was so wrong. Oh, my gosh, that was wrong. But your, your spirit, man, the Holy Spirit is saying, but, 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 but God forgave you. And don't you remember the stuff that you did? Did you deserve to die? But your flesh say, but, but no, but they deserve to die. They deserve to be locked up. And the two are fighting. And the Bible teaches us. That if we continue to pray, if you continue to do what we're doing right now, you continue to get in your word. This always ends up winning out. The spirit of the Lord gives us liberty where the spirit of the Lord is. There's freedom who the sun sets free is free. I don't have to yield to this one. I yield to this one. So right now we're going to pause and allow this one, the Holy Spirit, to remind us of all the stuff that you did that he gave you a pass on. All the stuff that you should absolutely die for. If you say you have no sin, then you're a liar. Every last one of us has messed up. Some of us still messing up. Holy Spirit, for 15 seconds, I trust you in this moment that you're moving. Will you reveal to us, like, how great egregious our sins are in your nostrils, were in our nostrils, still are in, our, in your nostrils? All right, go next, Lord. Speak. Okay. 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 Now now here 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 here's here's what I've learned. I'm just teaching you what I learned. I'm teaching you what I learned here. I'm teaching you what I've learned. No book taught me this. I didn't read this in a book. I lived this out. It's at this point where we allow his grace. You can just substitute the word forgiveness for grace. You can allow at this point grace to be received. Do you receive his grace? Do you accept his amazing grace? Do you accept his mercy that says you you get a pass for all that stuff you just thought about? What did you do in 90s? What did you do in the 2000s? What did you do in the 2010s? Grace. You st you're still living right now. He's allowed you to live.
Here's what forgiveness is. It's understanding that these are his people. He's God. I didn't create anybody. I don't have control of anybody. The Lord decides what what his people get and what they don't. He reigns on the just and the unjust. All he's ever asked us to now do as Christians, two commandments I give you. This is a sum up all the commandments, all of them. Don't have to follow 10 commandments. Don't have to follow all these laws that Moses try, tried to come up with. By the way, those laws were man-made. The 10 that God gave us was the 10 that he told us to follow, but then we couldn't follow those 10. So Moses came up with some amendments and more amendments, and then it became what it, he said, two commandments I give you. Just two. Love me, my father, with everything everything make me first place search for me find me live your life for me go after me put aside everything let me be your god the second commandment is almost like the first love people oh and a new commandment i give you don't don't love them like you love yourself love them the way that i love them Don't love people the way that you love them. Don't treat people like you want to be treated because we treat ourselves bad. We, if we were honest, we, we have our own self-esteem issues. We don't forgive our own self. So how can I forgive somebody when I don't forgive myself? How can I look at you with love when I don't even love myself? I have this poor self-image of myself, so I'm automatically, automatically going to look at you with that same self-poor image. I was raised wrong, so I'm looking at you. Maybe it's something wrong with you because there's something wrong with me. So we start projecting. We start projecting our own beliefs on other people because of what we went through. So the Lord said, no, 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 no. Don't love people like you love you. Love people like I love you. Well, how did you love me? It takes us all the way back to the grace. I forgave you. I'm patient with you. I believe in you. I'm loyal to you. I'll never leave you. Okay, so what's the application here? It's it's easier again. It's always easier said than done. This is the teaching right now. This is where we're at. Step four or five. I don't know where I'm at. So now that we understand that I'm supposed to love people the way that he loves them, I can't do this on my own. I don't, because I'm relying on flesh. My flesh rises up. This side of me says, no, don't love them like they deserve, like God loved them. Put them in jail. 30 year sentence, consecutive, back to back, no parole. You're going to die in jail. You're going you're gonna to die before I forgive you. He says, no, 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 no. That spirit that I deposited inside of you, will you, will you live in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of your flesh? Will, will you pause for a moment and listen to the spirit. And I guarantee you right now, as you're listening to the spirit, that incident, that situation that we went back to at the very beginning, that person that hurt you, that person that you do not want to forgive because your flesh don't want to forgive them. The Holy Spirit right now is teaching you and saying, be patient, be kind. Be merciful. Blessed are the merciful. They receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers. They're the ones who's really the children of God. You're not no child of God if you don't want to keep the peace. Don't lie to yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't be deceived thinking that you're a Christian, but you can't even have peace with your fellow man. So this is a this is a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit right now is teaching you, reminding you that love conquers sins. Love wins over a multitude of sins. Kindness pours a heap of coals on their head. And the Holy Spirit right now is showing you that, yeah, they may have done it on purpose. Maybe they did it on accident. 
Maybe they haven't apologized yet. It don't matter. Because I'm filled with the love of God. I, I get to be the hands and feet of him. I, I get to be an ambassador, a role model for the kingdom. But role models for the kingdom don't hate people. Role models for the kingdom don't put people in jail. They are graceful. Understand the definition. It's undeserved. Absolutely, they do not deserve this forgiveness that you're getting ready to give them. That's why it's called grace. Your mama messed up many times. Your husband messed up many times. Your sisters and your brothers, your friends. Grace. We're talking about reconciliation different. That's different. Right now, we're just having a heart. God is looking at hearts. And right now, he says, I just want your heart to see them the way that I see them. Well, how do you see them as children that are hurting? I think somebody said this in the chat just a while ago. Hurting people do hurt people. Have you ever considered the fact that perhaps that they didn't get the therapy that they needed as a child? That their core memories are, are confused and, and that they, they need help? Did you ever consider the fact that perhaps they didn't get the upraising and the, the modeling that they should have received to be the husband that they should have been, the friend they should have been? Uh, some of our own parents who've hurt us, they didn't even get what they needed. All of our parents probably should have went to therapy and counseling at six, seven years old. I know in the black community, all the atrocities that they've experienced both in school and at home. My mama never got therapy. My mama was called the N-word every day from first grade to 12th grade. Had to deal with hate, had to deal with hurt, had to deal with people always trying to come after her she should have got therapy we would have given her therapy today so so people who are hurting who never got help don't know how to to navigate those feelings they, they don't know how to listen to the holy spirit and if they don't have jesus then they're definitely living on evil spirits influencing speaking to them do it back to them evil for evil eye for eye she don't want to talk to you. You don't talk to them. Don't speak. Cold shoulder. We're not going to say nothing all day. How does a person who never got the help they needed change? How? And then you have to ask yourself this question. What kind of person are we to claim to be Christians, to not have the humanity to look down on a person who needs help. To look to, to, to be kind to a person who needs help. And I'm just using this as an illustration. I'm using this as an illustration. How do we treat people with special needs? People with severe uh, mental, emotional issues. Do we put them in jail? Are we supposed to put them in jail? I know in our society... We do. We, we do put people in jail who should not even be in jail. And again, there's a full construct there. That, that, that whole pipeline there illustrates our off thinking in America. We should be providing support, providing love. We should have humanity. Uh, we should love humanity in a way that says, I care for you. I want to help you. I want to rehabilitate you. Not throw you in jail because you... You didn't get the training you need, didn't get the therapy you need, didn't get the help you need. So rather than give you grace, I'm going to throw unforgiveness at you. R rather than provide you mercy, I'm going to be critical, I'm going to be bitter. Uh, rather than try to understand why and what happened to you, I'm going to assume that you knew better. And that you should have treated me better. And for that reason... I'll never forgive you. For everybody who has had very deep, deep, I mean deep hurt and unforgiveness, people unaliving one another, people harming each other sexually, people doing things to you that you say, man, why would they ever do that? Have you considered that we as a human race are flawed? That because of Adam, all of us have the capacity to to go as far as sin or take us. We shouldn't think any higher than ourselves than we should. Because all of us. Every last person in this chat. 
could be spending 30 years behind jail if it had not been for the grace of God that said, don't do it. Every last one of us had that sin nature to take a life, to do something cruel, to do something truly evil. You're not special. You're not, I don't think you're special. This is what John says. But this is what his meaning is when he says, don't, don't think that you don't have sin inside of you. Don't think you're better than anybody else just because you didn't do it. Don't think about your husband that he's some worse person because he failed. Because all of us had it in us. That's why I'm... Yeshua said this. Yeshua said this at the very end of, of Matthew. And he's going to say it in Revelation. He, well done. Come on. Come on. Welcome into the glory of the Lord. Because when I was sick, you took care of me. When I was in prison, you were there. When I was homeless, you, you took care of me. And he goes through this whole list of people who we would see as, wait a minute. They did that to themselves. They put themselves in that situation. I can't. And they, they're going to say, but when did, when did we see you in prison? When did we see you hurting? When were you ever sick? He said that when you did it to the least of them, the people that you thought, the people that you thought knew better, they were hurting. They were in their own prisons. They were sick. You didn't, you didn't know it because no one diagnosed them. You didn't know it because no one shared with you their medical records because they never talked about it. But deep down inside, the person that hurt you it's just like everybody else flawed. I'm moving now to part five or six. I don't know where I'm at. I hope you're following me. So to recap, the Lord took you to that place of, of hurt. Whoever hurt you, whatever you said, I'm not forgiving. We're talking about unforgiveness, bitterness. The Lord said, listen, whatever that was, that was the establishment. That's why you don't want to forgive that person. That was the thing that happened. And the Lord took us to the understanding that what grace is and what true forgiveness is what the definition of forgiveness is is unmerited undeserved you don't deserve it i'm just giving it out for free here's a hundred dollars to everybody well what did i do to get this nothing i just out of the goodness of my heart you can have it well how do i get that goodness Who, where does that goodness come from the lord showed us that it was his holy spirit that gives us this ability because without the holy spirit i have no capacity to forgive mankind for the atrocities, for their sins, for the mess ups. So then how do I apply that? What's the application of allowing it? Well, I have to listen. I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. These two forces are inside of me, constantly fighting, constantly asking to take control of my thoughts, my actions, my behaviors, my motives. I have to give in to the Holy Spirit. Well, how do I give in to the Holy Spirit? It goes all the way back. It's a circular, a secular uh, effect of going back to grace. I know what I did. I know my failures. I know my faults. And if he is willing and kind enough to give me a pass on wrath, uh, I deserve to die. And he said, you won't die today, Ken. I'm going to wake you up and let you live another day. I'm going to let you have my mercies brand new this morning. You can you know, be the best version of yourself. You have permission to be successful. I don't really care about the stuff you did. That's what grace is. Two commandments. Love me. And then love people like I love them it's a command that's not a suggestion it's not a recommendation it's a command if you are Christian I have no other choice but to give you undeserved mercy and grace let it go it's a choice spiritual choice the spirit's tugging you right now to say just let it go I'll never get an apology but let it go uh, they'll never admit that they're wrong let it go they need therapy, but let it go. Uh, they don't even see what they're doing. They're narcissists. They have cognitive dissonance. So what? Let it go. Because I, I was a narcissist at once in the eyes of the Lord. I had cognitive dissonance, meaning I, the thing that I knew was wrong, I accepted it as right because I didn't want to fix my issue. And so cognitively, I disassociated myself that this was wrong. The person that hurt you or that was wrong uh, it's hard for them to admit it. They need help. We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about you. So in this unforgiveness, 
that now really is hate or bitterness. The question on the table today, do you want to hate people or do you want to love people? So thank you for healing my eye. I don't know why I was irritated. <laughs> do you want to love people or you want to hate people? I ask it a different way. Do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? The only people that will end up in heaven are the Christians who have surrendered and lived their lives for the Lord. You cannot say that you love a God that you've never seen, but hate your brother who you see every day. Impossible. Those two do not go together. That's the very definition of a lukewarm Christian. You, you cannot claim in your heart to, to love, oh, I love the Lord. I love him, I love him, I love him. But then the people that he wants you to love on impossible you cannot say you have the spirit of God living in you now now there's no condemnation here because this is where the Lord leaves us here on earth to get better to learn uh, to uh, to grow from faith to faith to glory to glory so right now part six part seven eight I don't know where we're at I'm just listening to the spirit I followed this process with many others that I've helped before the question is easily answered. No, I do not want to hate. I want to love. I want to be the example. I want to be like Christ. I say I want to be like Christ. So I guess I I have to make a decision right now. We're at the decision stage. We're at the decision stage where the Bible says, and I, I've, I know I've said a lot of verses. I'm not giving you the reference scriptures, but this is scripture. You can go back and ask the Lord to show you I just want to keep a flow here. This is the part where you get to apply what we've learned today. The scripture says, if your brother sins against you, forgive him. Peter says, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about seven times? That's your divine number. That sounds like a good number. Can I forgive somebody seven times? And then after the seventh time, they mess up. Just move on. And Yeshua says, how about 70 times 70 a day? And Peter and everybody lost it. I wish I could have been there to see their physical reactions, their facial expressions, their shrugging, their, uh, wait, what? Wait, wait, what did he just, 70 times seven, 490 times somebody can hurt me and I am to forgive them? Yeah. And, and that's, that's not even literal. I'm just giving that to you uh, to, to give you a, a word picture. One, two, so forth and so on. That hurts. After a while, it, it really hurts. After a while, it, it's downright disrespectful. After a while, uh, you're not going to do that again. I'm fighting back. After a while, I'm 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 a it's getting ready to get ugly. Grace. So, so there your shoe is. Knowing what his mission was from day one to take on all mankind everyone sins not just sin but the multiple atrocities that I committed on his body the, the multiple failures and mistakes that you've committed on his body he did not just have one sin on him he had trillions and trillions and trillions of mistakes all on him at once think about all the centuries that have gone by and the thousands and millions and millions. I think we're up to a trillion plus people in the world. 
And each person probably has thousands and thousands of sins. I know my sins are piled high. And you take on the trillions and trillions and trillions of sins that he knew he had to literally take into his body and wear them and be seen from his father as unrighteous because he had no sin. He knew no sin, but he took our griefs. He took our sorrows. He, he took our failures, our hurts, everybody's, the person who hurt you, yours, and there he is in the garden, sweating the greatest drops of sweat that look like blood, saying, Father, this is too much. All of these sins, everybody's sins. It's one thing to die for my own sins. That's punishment within itself. That's, that's a lot of jail time. That's a lot of whipping. That's a lot of scourging to, to deal with my 1,000 sins. But to to take on your sins, your cousin's sins, take on the punishment that's deserving of everybody. He kneels in this garden and says, this is too much. If this cup can pass, if you can please allow another way, let it come, let it come. But not my will, but your will. So he goes to the cross. Oh, and on that cross, he says, it's finished. It's done. It's done. Well, what's finished? His life? No. Your sins. Finished. Clear. Given a pass. Unmerited. And he dies. When he comes back, Right before he ascends, he tells us this. This is his final verbal message to the masses. It said that he spoke to the disciples. He spoke to two on the road. Uh, where they uh, Emmaus, I can't think of the name of the road. Forgive me. He even spoke to up to 500 people before he ascended. And he tells them this. It's a simple message. I need you all to go into the world. All the world. Tell everybody the good news. Tell them about me. Baptize them in the name of me, Yeshua, my father, Y-H-W-H. And I'm going to send you a comforter. Tell them that, that the comforter is coming. I'm going a, I'm to a literally put inside of you all my spirit. Never has ever happened before. David had my spirit hovering over him. Saul, Elijah, a few others had the spirit, but not living in them. 24-7. 24-7. And when he comes, you will be witnesses with your life, with your love. You will be the witness to your mom, to your dad, to your sisters and your brothers. You are going to share the gospel with your life. Not going to church, not remembering all the scriptures or going in, in volunteering at the food bank. Your life. Step eight, step nine. I don't know where I'm at. Everybody who has ever done something to you where you say it, I cannot forgive them. I need you to take a moment to understand the depth and the height of his love. I, I need you just for a moment to grasp how important your soul salvation is to this theory, to this belief system, to this narrative of salvation. Salvation in itself is this very thought of applying grace. Grace has been given, it's been received. You now have a responsibility to take that same grace and pass it on. Undeserved. It, for the record, we understand it's undeserved. Undeserved. 
So that person that, that comes into the room, and now we're going to talk about the, the feelings that come up, right? Well, I think we're at that point. I think we got a good understanding that I have to forgive. Not because of who I am. I'm not some special person. I'm not, it's not me. It's the, it's the God in me. It's in him that I live, I move, I have my being. He set me free. What the spirit of the Lord is, there's, I'm, I'm free. I, I'm not I'm not even tripping. I'm not worried. I'm not held back. I'm not in bondage. I don't have any fears or hangups. I don't have any kind of self, you know, uh, deprivation or what's the right word? Uh, uh, I'm not in my pride. I'm not in my arrogance to not forgive you. Like I understand this is greater than me. This is bigger than me. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with him. I got to I got to forgive mama. I got to forgive my brother. That's just who God is. That's his character. That's my character now. And I have to listen. This is this is the this is the rub. This is where we meet this challenge. I have to choose to let the Holy Spirit live. I have to choose to walk in the spirit. You do know Christianity is still a choice. Even with the spirit living in me, I can still choose to do something I shouldn't do. Each of you understand that. I have to choose to forgive. And I've made a decision right now today. Here's your, here's your reset button for forgiveness. Everybody in this chat, here's where we hit the reset button right now. I choose right now, going forward the rest of my life, to forgive everybody who's ever hurt me. I don't need an apology. I don't need an explanation. I'm just going to give them God's love. I'm going to give them. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to role model this for you. If I can if I can coach you in a way or help you in a way that, that makes sense. My high school coach hurt me drastically, drastically, put me in a position that made me a failure. I felt uh, did not give me the opportunity that I thought I should have had. And I did not forgive that man i hated that man with the definition that we know now i was bitter toward him i was critical i put my mouth on him i told everybody what i felt about him i hated him god got me to a point where i i let it go i loved him i did the opposite of being critical i did the opposite of being bitter I let I, I, I love him and I saw him as someone who was hurting someone who needed help someone that perhaps needed some therapy someone who didn't have God's love and I had compassion I feel bad for him I truly in my heart feel really bad that he treated me wrong and many others wrong but I forgive him it's not his fault we don't fight against flesh and blood got to college college coach First college coach after two years did me wrong. I could write a book about the mistreatment. I could tell everybody and ruin his reputation. I was hurt. I don't know what he was going through. He had rules. He probably had to follow some system, but it wasn't right. And I walked around for years blaming other people. And the Lord taught me, you're not, you're not better than anybody. You made mistakes. I giving you grace, give him grace. Let it that's my child. That's not your child. You don't you don't get to decide whose sins are forgiven and unforgiven. You're not God. Where were you, Job, when I put the sand in the sea together and told him where to stop? Who are you? I let it go. I don't care. Because it didn't define me. It didn't change my future. I thought it did. I thought it had an impact on my life, but I come to find out. The Lord is in control of my life. Even the stuff that don't go right. Ask Joseph. Joseph could have hated his brothers. He, he could have been bitter. He could have been hurt. And he was for a little bit. He had them playing these games, putting stuff in their bags and going back and go get the other brother. And he was hurting. And the Lord had to reveal to Joseph everything that happened to you. I allowed it for your good. So you got to forgive your brothers. Job can tell us about it. Job's old, his own best friends accused him of the most sacred thing, blasphemy. 
You must have done something against God. Job, you're a liar. If we had to sum up Job chapter 2 through Job 41, his friends pretty much call him a liar the whole book. You're a liar, man. You did something. Job, you're a big old fake. You've been saying, and they hurt him. Do you know Job did not receive his blessing? Remember the Lord blessed him double fold? The Bible says that Job was told by God, you have to forgive your friends. And the moment you forgive your friends, I'll bless you. Wait, forgiveness? Wait, is this is this a, a shadow of, of what Christ had done? Of course it is. Everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Yeshua in the Old Testament. Joseph points to Jesus. Job points to Jesus. I can give you 10 more incidents in my life of people who severely hurt me. And the Lord said, the only way you're moving forward, the only way you're going to get that next blessing, the only way I can take you to the next level is for you to have compassion for humanity. To love my people the way that I love them. The only way that you're going to receive what you're missing. Quit blaming it on the devil. The devil didn't steal anything from you. I do not like when people say, I'm going to get back everything the devil stole. The devil didn't steal anything. Yes, we fight against principalities and darkness, but we choose to allow or welcome in that evil. So you get to a point, yes, where you say, I, I, I make a choice to give you a pass. I, I'm making a decision right now to give you undeserved love. Your husbands and wives that have hurt you, that have lied to you, mistreated you, your sons, your daughters who have mismanaged you, lied to you, hurt you, uh, your co-workers, your parents, I go down the list, you know who they are, that you said, I'll never forgive them. Today's your day. T today's the day where you see them the way that the Lord sees them. We'll talk about reconciliation later, another day in a moment, but right now we just got to, that person in your head that you said, I just, I just can't believe they treated me this way. They continue to treat me this way. You know how the Lord sees that person right now? That's the way we need to see him. You know why we can see them like that? Because he's he's in us. See, I want you to get that. Right now, sitting in heaven, the Father and Yeshua are looking down at humanity with compassion and love, waiting for everybody to turn their hearts. He's not angry. He's not mad. He's not sitting up in heaven punishing people. He's not putting together some list of to-dos that they must complete to, to reach him. He's looking down from heaven saying, Oh, come on. Come to me, all you that are heavy laden. Draw close to me. That's what he's saying in heaven. So then what is he saying in our hearts since he lives in our hearts, since we are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Since we live and move and have his purpose, since we have the mind of Christ, what is he saying then inside of us? He should be saying, oh, I feel so I feel bad for them. I have compassion on them. Oh, how sad. Not, oh, I wish they get it. So this is your moment. I see many of you in the chat have always already said, I'm done. I love them. I'm going to let the Lord deal with them. I, I'm going to see them the way that the Lord sees them. If you need to say that out loud so you can hear yourself, you need to hear yourself say, I forgive them. I need you to go down the list of everybody. The Lord is right now revealing to you people that you haven't talked to people that you've ignored, people that you just don't mess with anymore. The Lord is revealing to you in this moment all the people that you were bitter toward, critical toward, hateful toward, sar sarcastic toward, the people that you have been uh, mean toward. He's revealing to you right now those people. And I want you one by one, 
you just don't put it in this chat this isn't about the chat right now this is personal you and the lord lord i forgive my mama lord i forgive my daddy lord i forgive my brother lord i forgive that coach that parent that teacher lord i forgive that ex-boyfriend lord that that boss that lied on me got me fired for no reason i Everything worked out anyway. Everything worked out. You had something better for me. So why, why am I mad at something that ended up working out for me? Like, all things have worked out for my good. Look at my life. Look at my life. I'm living. I got food in the pantry. I may not have a million dollars in the bank, but I got something in the bank. I got people that love me. I got people that love me. Why am I allowing the past to impact my present? Why am I allow unforgiveness to sabotage my future? Why am I going to let unforgiveness put a strain, a stronghold on the things that the Lord wants for me over here? He said it wasn't meant to hurt you but to give you a hope and a future. So why? I make a decision. Can I pause? I, 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 I feel like I've been talking for a long time. I'm going to pause. I know the Holy Spirit's been talking to you personally through me. I'm going to pause for 30 seconds and let him to continue to process. Go journal what you need to journal. Write down what you need to write down. Make a list of all the names of people that you just. You need to continue to work on. And now we need to move into reconciliation. So here's the thing. Here's how you know that you, you've, you're you free right now. You can think about it and it don't hurt anymore. Like, I mean, what impact did it have? I trust the Lord anyway. The Lord don't mess over my life. He doesn't cause me to go down. Like he, he leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He, he set a table up for me in the presence of the very people who hurt me. My cup overflows. So why am I upset? Sure, surely goodness and mercy. Wait, wait, mercy. There's that word mercy. It's going to follow me when, how, where? all the days of my life I, I just want to pause as you're processing this any additional spirits of bitterness hostility that's sticking around in this chat you know at this point your days are number you're done I want to I want to Clear the table right here and just identify any and everything that the devil may have tried to sneak in and, and disguised or masked as unforgiveness. Hatred, being fearful of that person, mistreatment, offense, offended, torment, criticisms, cruelty, spirits of bitterness resentfulness I resent her I resent that rage violence guilt shame animosity spirits of contention spirits of revenge spirits of strife spirits of retaliation hostility spirits of separation you separated yourself from the family you separated yourself from the friend group you stopped chatting you took yourself out by spirits of being conceited, being arrogant and prideful, being better than, being narcissistic in your own way, thinking that you're better than that person, scornful, vanity, spirits of coldness, spirits of detaching oneself, being indifferent. It's a difference in giving it to the Lord and man, forget them. I don't care about them. Somebody brings some. Hey man, did you hear about man? I don't care about them. Man, don't be showing me that. 
I bind that spirit. That's that spirit of it's a, we call it hating, jealousy, ego. All those spirits. All those spirits. There's probably some more I'm missing on here. You don't have power anymore. You lost your power today. We have victory. We have victory. I want to thank everybody who's been commenting here in the chat. I also want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for following through on all this. Here's what we're going to do now. I think I'm going to, I'm going to scroll back up and, and look at all of this. But just simply, just put it in the chat. If you, if you walk through this process, this exercise, and you are now the place where you really don't care anymore in a good way. You love them. If you were to see them right now, you'd wave at them. Big old smile. If you received your freedom today, can you just put it in the chat? I'm free. I'm free. I forg or I forgive. I, I don't care no more. It's not even that the Lord is taking care of it. 70 times 70. I love him. If, if you receive your freedom, I'm free or I forgive him. Come on. Robert, thank you. for Brother, God bless you. And, and for those like Brother Robert who, who dealt with years and years of parental issues, hate, mistreatment, and you said, I never forgive them. Do you know now there's a, let me speak to you on behalf of the Lord, there's a blessing that's getting ready to follow. Uh, there, there's an abundance of God's grace that you hadn't even seen yet that's getting ready to follow. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard nor has heart even imagined what the Lord has in store for those who love him. You are showing that you love him right now by saying, I love your people. Put in this chat right now, if you got that revelation that I can't even claim I love God, I'm free right now if I can't love his people. I'm not disappointed anymore. I'm not surprised by their actions. I'm not hurt. I can look at them and just pray for them. I feel like now when you think about them, now when you see them, you should have a heart of compassion. A heart that says, man, really? I'm sad for them. I'm not angry anymore. I don't get upset when I hear stuff. I'm sad for them. I'm sad. I pray for them. I'm free. You don't get that don't hold that doesn't hold me anymore. Robert, thank you. I mean, I'm sorry. Roberta, let me start here at the top. This is amazing, Lord. Lord, I give you the glory. Like I you get all the credit for this. I appreciate you. Look, look how many people are getting ready to live in victory. They're getting ready to live their lives in fullness and in abundance. In abundance. You you asked for this. You, you stayed around. And now you're free. Savage King said I'm free. Robert said heavyweight lifted. Uh, Elena, I'm free. T Talia, I'm free. Keggy, I forgive. I'm free. Uh, Sis, I always, I got to lock in your name. You tell me every time. Seven, I'm free. Uh, this is amazing. I'm just scrolling. Look at all of the free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I forgive. I forgive. Another one. I forgive. Oh, the enemy is upset right now. He is upset. Why is he upset? Because who the sun set free? Is free for real like forever free never in bondage again will I be hell to not forgiving people and now you know the process now you now you understand what his love looks like so now you can go role model for others who need this type of love this is all our world needs he, he came because he is love Ah, this is good. I want to thank you all for 
trusting the Lord here. Beautifully humble, I'm free. Trina, I'm free. Ezra, brother Ezra, good to have you on here, man. Congratulations on Saturday, by the way. Your graduation, man. Send me your cash app. Roberta free. Jessica, I'm free. Solaro, I'm free. I forgive. Sheena, I'm free. I forgive them all. Living by faith, I'm free. I forgive them. Jose, I'm free. I leave it in God's hands. That's not my issue. That He's He created the message. You get you get it. You, Lord, we get it. We get it. Robert, I'm free. Overcoming. Forgiveness is a process. You yeah, every it's like I forgive them. And and for those of you that are still in the hurt, you're waiting on something to change. You live your life in forgiveness. In un, it's undeserved. It's undeserved. It's they it's undeserved. They don't deserve it. I give it to you freely. It's you I'm I forgive you. But they haven't apologized. It doesn't matter. I forgive you. Monique, I'm free. I, ch I choose it. Yeah, I choose to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of my flesh. Shy said, I'm free. I forgive him. I'm free. Jessica, I love God too much to risk my salvation on unforgiveness. It's not worth it. I'm going to heaven. I'm not missing. I'm not missing heaven because I didn't understand the, the gospel message of, of freedom and grace. I'm not missing heaven because I was bitter and harsh and cold and ugly towards somebody because they hurt me. I forgive them. Kim said, I'm free. Welcome back, Kim. Sorry that we, we took so long. She said, how do you forgive yourself, though? Oh, we going down. That's a whole nother path that we can go down but it's the same process you forgive you i take that back it's not a whole nother path it's a very similar path uh, how do you forgive yourself is by realizing who you are and you're sure that you are royalty that you are king's kid that, that again who the son says free i don't hold myself to those standards part of the reason we don't forgive ourselves is because we said unrealistic expectations we put ourselves in an area of pride and ego that needs to be knocked down and so i can forgive myself by not even expecting a lot out of myself and i can be very content paul said i've learned how to be content because i had a lot i've had a little he said but i've learned the secret to contentment how to live with myself i've learned it and that's understanding this this is the actual application the the context of this scripture he said i've learned that i can do all things through christ yeshua because he strengthens me i can forgive myself because he was with me the whole time he gives me the strength i don't i it's not i can't be upset with me because it wasn't me in the first place what you're really upset with is god if if if, if i wanted to go there which i don't want to yet because there's another piece here we're going to talk about reconciliation but but for those who haven't forgiven themselves what we teach what i teach is that you, you have to understand that the lord is sovereign we have to accept the fact that he is the all-knowing god that he does not make mistakes with our life even when we choose our own free will he sees every chess piece on the board And so when things happen in my life, even the things that I've done myself, the things that I've caused, my own failures, my own mistakes, I've hurt people, I've messed over people, I've, I've, I've crossed the line one too many times, I accuse myself, I have my own self uh, rejection issues and abandonment issues, I've abandoned myself, I don't love myself, I don't like myself, I don't like what I see in the mirror. Then I have to say, Lord, you created me, though. You this is why I wish I could talk to people who are really uh, hurting and and don't like themselves because it's this thought right here that if he created you, 
the way that he wanted to create you, then what you're really saying is that he made a mistake. That he didn't know what he was doing. Well, what you're really saying when you when you get mad at yourself and you don't want to forgive yourself, you're telling God, you, you're really pretty much telling God that he didn't know what he was doing. And I know that's not what we were saying, but that's what we that's what's being meant. That's what he hears. I can't forgive myself. Do you trust him? He can fix it. He, he can right the wrongs. He can redirect your path. He can fix those things that are off. David was sorrowful for what he did to Uriah, how he treated Bathsheba. He cried and mourned, mourned and cried. He saw the error of his ways. He couldn't forgive himself. And then the spirit of the Lord revealed to him that even in this, you're still a man after my own heart. Even in all of your own failures, David, you're still royalty. You're still the chosen king. You're still the chosen child. You're still grafted in. You're still a child of the king. So I can forgive myself because he forgave me. He's not holding me accountable. He loves me too much to hold me accountable. So why am I upset with myself? Why am I putting higher standards on myself that God hadn't even put on me? Yes, I am to live a, a life that's holy, acceptable unto God. That's my reasonable service. I am to, to come out of this world and not be in the world. I, I, I understand all that, but at the same time, I'm growing in my faith. And he knows that. That's why I'm still here. He'll take you home when you're ready to go home. And I say that in a loving, compassionate way. I say it in a way for those who've already lost loved ones that will help you understand. He is the sovereign God. Nothing happens that he does not allow. So when he's ready to say, Ken, you've learned it all. You've learned enough. You've helped as many people as you need to help. Then he'll call me home. But until then, every day I wake up is a new day to grow, to learn, uh, to, to, to be the hands and the feet of Yeshua, to be his ambassador, to, to allow the temple of the Holy Ghost. Kim said, I'm free. But Craig said, I'm free. For you know not what you do. Yeah, that's what he told them. Lord, forgive them. Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. I have compassion on them. Freely I receive, freely I give. Charlo said, although I'm waiting on the situation, I'm, I'm still going to be free. I'm, be free. A man said, I'm, I forgive them. I'm free. Come on. Man, you all are amazing. I'm free. All right. Quickly, quickly. And we won't spend a lot of time on this. We've been on here way too long, right? Reconciliation is different than, than forgiveness. It's, it's totally different. I'll use more scriptures. You'll hear me. I mean, I give you the reference, but you'll hear the scriptures in my, in, in my explanation, my dissertation here is that reconciliation, the definition is the ability to, to go back to the way things were. Let that process for a moment. Forgiveness and reconciliation aren't the same things. Um, it can happen at the same time. There are times where we can sit down and we have a conversation. I forgive you. You forgive me and reset. Reset. We're done. You hear me say that a lot in our, our prayers. Lord, reset marriages. Re reset relationships between sons and daughters and moms and dads. The reset or the restoration is process. It's time. It's it's a lot of choices. It's therapy. It's restoring trust. It's reading scripture. It's just being around each other and getting back to a place. Some people can do it overnight. Uh, me and my brother can disagree, argue about something. And two minutes later, we've learned. We've just learned to love each other. Like, man, I ain't, I'm not tripping over that. My, Dre, my bad. I, I shouldn't have said that. He'll say, hey, we got off. Big old hug. And the reset button is hit immediately. 
like it never happened. And then there are other people that the reconciliation takes, again, it takes two people to reconcile. So you may have forgiven and you're ready to reconcile, but the Lord may need to work on that person's heart. That's what we're waiting on a lot of times is that the Lord may just need to work on their heart. So what do you what do you do between now and the reconciliation? Or what if you don't want to reconcile? What if you cool? I forgive them. I'm not sure if I want to go out to dinner with them, invite them over to my house. How far do I take the reconciliation? What what does the Lord require of me? That's what we go back to. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. You can't force reconciliation. You you can't uh, insist that it happens. Yeshua tells us in the chapter uh, of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, he gives us a very clear, I mean, as clear as mud. Mud's not clear, but that's just the same we use, right? Very clearly on what reconciliation looks like. He says, if you have an alt against a brother, brother sinned against you, forgive him, forgive him. But the reconciliation is I go to you and I say, let's reconcile. Let's, let's own it. Let's hold the accountability where accountability is due. Not, not guilty, please. Not uh, uh, making anyone feel guilty or condemned that's that's not what we're doing we're just getting back on the same page and the bible says if that brother says no i don't know what you're talking about you hurt me but i didn't do why are you offended why are you so easily offended i didn't do anything wrong yeshua says go get another person who was there the person who was aware a person who may understand the right and wrong from the situation it may not even been there but they understand wait 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 i'll go with you and the bible says take him Jesus said this. Go to the person and say, hey, we want to reconcile. We want to make this right. We we want to clear the air. We want to get back to the way it was. I got a third party. I got maybe someone who's an arbitrator that understands. Let's, you were wrong, and we just want to make it right. And we just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And perhaps it doesn't happen again. Maybe you, you use your words more carefully. Maybe you think about what you say. Maybe you, you don't do that ever again and just want to make sure you understand it offended us. I forgive you already. I'm not looking for an apology. I just want to reconcile. We want to be able to come to birthday parties and not walk on eggshells. We want to be able to enjoy the 4th of July and not wonder and ask who's going to be over there. I want to be able to drive by your house and not worry if, if there's animosity there. So can we reconcile? Can we get this straight? And the Bible says, if that person still says no, no, y'all are wrong. I don't want to forgive yet. Uh, uh. Then the Bible says you could go get a majority, the church, a group of people. Go get the whole family. See, do you understand that we shouldn't be suing one another? Footnote. Christians shouldn't be suing one another. Christians shouldn't be taking one another to court. Yeshua told us what to do. Why are we not listening to Yeshua? He told us exactly how to handle disputes, how to handle misdemeanors and altercations. If somebody did something wrong, don't hit them back. If they ask you for your coat, give them your, your, your jacket and your shirt too. Like, why, why, do we, why do we follow? Because the law said we can. We're supposed to follow the laws of the land. There's a lot of laws that are evil. He told us what to do. You have an issue with your brother or sister. Quit filing lawsuits. I get it. Some things have to be handled legally because it's property or land. But are we asking the Lord for guidance? Or have we tried this process first where we sit down one-on-one, -on -one, then we sit down with two or three, and then we sit down with a group, our own jury, our own loved ones, our own family members, and say, hey, we all need to talk to you. Wait, why are y'all calling a meeting on me? Because we love you. We love you. And so we just want to sit you down, talk to you, and, and, and let you know that this is perhaps something that you need to change in your thinking. It's impacting the family. It's impacting us. You did this. You did that. And we're not here to put you in jail. We're not here to, to make you feel guilty, condemned, or... or we just we, we're here to love you and we want you to know that 
That can't happen again. You can't come around the family and be drunk like that again. You can't treat people like that again. You can't treat my sister like that ever again. Like, we're here to let you know that we love you. This is all love. Like, no one's raising their voice. No one's getting loud. No one's standing up. No one's pointing fingers. We're just here to love you. Remember, this is compassion. This is compassion. This is compassion. Give me a second, Cato. I'll explain it. Let me finish my point. I saw your note. We'll get there. So the Bible says in verse, and this leads up to our memory scripture. This is the context of our memory scripture. Uh, if that person decides they do not want to reconcile, Yeshua said it himself. Paul said it himself. Peter said it himself. At that point, you can stop with the reconciliating. You can shake the dust off your shoes and put it in the hands of the Lord. I still forgive you. I still love you. I'm still going to wave at you. I'm still going to show up. I'm not, not going to show up just because you're there. You're not going to ruin my fun. I forgive you. I choose to love you. Now, your behavior and your actions are on you at this point. And I can move on. I don't have to force the reconciliation. I did my part. I did my part. Does that make sense? Does that, did that answer the question that needed to be answered? Are we on the same page as far as reconciliation? Reconciliation is not that hard of an issue to understand biblically. It's, it's, it's right here in our word, how to reconcile. It's a choice also. You choose to go call somebody and say, hey, I, I, and I'll give, you, I'll give you a situation. I'll, I'll keep this as real as we can, can make it. I had some family members that hurt me really bad. Bad. Terribly bad. Lies. Misunderstandings. No one called to verify or see what was going on. Just kept their own little narrative going. And for almost two and a half years, I was bitter. I was angry. I was frustrated. It was during that same time period that I was going through my depression. I think I shared this with many of you. Like My life wasn't perfect. Brother Ken, Christian Ken, preacher Ken. Too much happening at the same time. And the Lord had to show me, remind me of my own teaching that he gave me to look at them with compassion, look at them with love, look at them as if perhaps they didn't get the therapy that they needed or the help they needed they didn't get the right right role modeling as a as a child love them forgive them so i forgave them i, I let everybody know i'm good like i'm good but why you don't talk to them i had some people ask me why you don't call them i, I do i check on them so one of the family members i went out of my way multiple times to connect to reconcile i did not follow Steps two and three, like Yeshua asked. He said, go get somebody else. Sit down with them. Um, I, well, I actually maybe did. I did step two because we got another cousin involved and said, let's let's all try to figure this thing out together. The, the problem was for me is that I had no group. The, they were the group. They were the majority. So had I sat down uh, with the group, to discuss this because their minds and their spirits weren't in the right place perhaps it it, it would have looked like I was the one that was being ignorant or the one that was off and so I was listening to the Holy Spirit I was listening to the Holy Spirit I reconciled three or four times called left messages, sent text messages went by people's homes I did my part and even in couple of those instances you could say was a group gathering because in one of those instances I was over there trying to reconcile with the, the one of the key individuals that was was uh, 
responsible or kind of leading the pack. And as I was there, other people start showing up. I didn't know they were going to be there. The Lord knew they were going to be there. And as I'm sitting there talking, another one and another one. And I'm sitting there saying, Lord. And I kept a smile on my face. I kept good energy. I told everybody in that room I loved them, that we missed them. No harsh feelings. We come in peace. And uh, I, again, I cannot speak for other people. They have free choice. They have free will. All I can be responsible for is that I, I know. I don't care what anyone else says or say I did or didn't do. I know what I did. You know what you're doing. You know you sent the text message and tried to fix it. They can lie all they want to. You did your part. You stopped by, you knocked on the door, you waved, you smiled. They're going to say otherwise. They're going to take it out of context. Well, did you hear how she said? Did you hear what he said? It's all good. I did my part. Did I answer that question? Did that help? Is this, has this been good today? For those of you who need continued support and healing, just keep keep staying in the scripture. Keep praying. The Lord will get you there. But I believe we, we had breakthrough today. Sis, did we have breakthrough today? Does anybody have any other questions regarding this? Forgiveness and reconciliation. Anybody? People that you hadn't talked to in a long time. There's fathers and mothers that you just cut off. Sons and daughters that have cut you off. Aunties and uncles and friends and loved ones, exes. I think we got the solution. Just love people like the way he loved them. See them the way he sees them. Any other questions? I'm going to close this out. You've been more than patient. We've had prayer, a little bit of Bible study, a little bit of healing service, deliverance service. I'm going to let y'all have y'all's day. I'm going to read a couple of more comments and I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. So, so if they don't want to see a counselor, if, if they refuse, if they refuse, there's nothing you can do. You did your part. Now, you, this is what we pray every morning. This is why we pray every morning. We pray for those who, who hurt us. We pray and ask the Lord to bless them, to heal, heal them. We ask the Holy Spirit to speak to them. We ask the Holy Spirit to send a laborer. Uh, they stopped listening to me. They stopped considering that my words had some type of impact so i pray that when she or he goes to work i pray that when he or she uh, attends a basketball game i pray that when he or she talks to another loved one that they have an aha moment that, that a situation comes up like david did where nathan had to kind of reveal to him through another source another way that you were wrong and then david said whoa wait a minute you talked about me that's how I treated her. Wait, I didn't realize this how I've been acting this whole time. Wait, that's me. We pray and say, Lord, send a laborer. Send a laborer. All right. Let me look here. Keggy said, if there was abuse involved, can we forgive? Of course. Let go? Of course. But yeah, don't put yourself back in harm's way until they're 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 here. See, there's it's two pieces here. That's why I'm, I, I want to be very clear, Sister uh, Keggy, that there's forgiveness, and then there's reconciliation. If that person is on drugs, still in an abusive pattern, destructive behaviors, I, I'm going to keep me and my family safe. I still forgive you. I feel I feel really bad for you. I have a heart of compassion for you. But I'm not going to put myself in harm's way. I would tell my daughter, don't go back over there until his mind gets right, until he gets some get right, until he reconciles, until he asks for, you know, he, he has some things he has to do. You still have to forgive. You, you have to let it go. But don't, man, I, uh, uh, don't put yourself in harm's way. Very good question. Very good question. Sis said, I really need to hear this. I thank the Lord. Can we give him the credit? Just with your own mouth, say, Lord, thank you, because I don't want any of it. The Lord did this to, for us. 
He did this for us. Felicia, he did this for us. He does this all the time. I don't know why he's choosing to use us right now for these opportunities. This is all of us. We're all in this together. I, I'm not even able to speak had it not been for you all's uh, you know, openness and sincerity in, in, in allowing us to, to have these conversations. I know it feels one way, but it's two way. I'm reading the chat. You're being honest. You're being open. You're free now. You guys are getting ready to go through life on a whole nother level. So we're done cutting people off. They cut themselves off. They don't want to speak to me, but I love them. I'm over. I'm whenever they're ready to reconcile. I'm here. Felicia said, I could not forgive today, but I'm working on it. That's fair. That is the most sincere, honest thing that I could hear. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Continue to work. You, you know the steps now. I'm going to put this on YouTube in a separate section called Convos After Prayer. We'll title it Forgiveness. So you can go back and listen to this, Felicia, anytime you want. Listen to the different steps. Play it at night. Play it on road trips. Let the Lord minister to you in his own way. Maybe there's a step that I missed that specific to you. But it's all about grace. It's grace. I'm not missing heaven for grace. I'm going to give it out. I'm going to give I'm going to give it out. And you continue to work on it. I, I appreciate you. Let me tell you that again, just so you didn't hear. Me. Just in case you didn't hear me. Felicia, thank you. Thank you. For your honesty and transparency and working on it. That means a lot to me that you said I'm going to work on it. And then I'm going to close here in a, in a word of prayer. I'm going to answer the brother's question quickly. Shy said, I didn't even know I need to be free. Yeah, there's a lot. Like when I did this exercise a few years ago and I did it in 2009. The people that you didn't even think you had a grudge against. The Lord starts showing you. Like, oh, yeah, you, you're in your feelings about this person and you're still upset about that situation that happened in the class meeting and you're still upset about this that happened at church and you mad at this pastor and you still got your feelings and you still in your feelings about And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lord. I was just asking you to help me with the coach and you didn't show me five other people. He said, because they come back seven times stronger. They come back to destroy you and put you in a position to where you. So do I just keep praying for reconciliation? Yes. That's what we pray every morning for husbands and wives, sons and daughters. Lord, Holy Spirit, you always hear me start with Holy. See, so what happened today was Holy Spirit. Ruish Hakadesh in Hebrew. Ruish Hakadesh did everything today. I didn't do it. He didn't need my help. He already knew this morning when you woke up. He knew last night when you went to bed that he was going to start doing this. He started working on your heart. He started the whole forgiveness process months ago, years ago. He, he, this was a setup. Sister Jamie, still on here. I didn't see you on here. Lydia. She said, I have my grandkids last five days, so I'm that's okay, Lydia. You're in my prayers. You are not. You already know you're in our prayers, sis. I, pray, you, you all are amazing friends and family to even go along on this journey with us. So the brother said, "Look at, uh, can I, can I look at 1838?" I try to always read the context of the scripture. You got to read the pretext, the post text to get the context. And so I'm just, just trying to make sure I read it and, and understand what you want an explanation. Gathering the 12 around. If you have to go, go ahead and leave. I don't want to hold you up for your day. I don't want you to have to spend your whole day with me. We've been on here since 6 a.m. Some of you jumped on a little bit later. I'm just going to read the scripture. First of all, Cato, are you still here? Because I'm not going to explain it if he's already left the chat. Let me see. 
Cato. Brother Cato, are you, are you here? So I, I read from different versions. I have a, um, a tick, TikTok on these different versions. There's a scale that we use in Christendom on the relevancy of the Bible. Not to go into too much detail, but there's three versions of the Bible that you can always purchase. And within those three versions are various versions. So for instance, the very first type of Bible there is, is a word for word. They went and got the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and then even some ancient scrolls that they found after the Dead Sea Scrolls and said, this is exactly the word for word translation. God, God, faith, faith, hope, hope. And they did a word for word translation. There are about 10 Bibles in this word for word. I read one of the best versions on the, the far end of the scale called the NASB. The NASB, uh, the New American Standard Bible. I think that's what NASB means. NASB is in my head. It is as close to word for word as you're going to get. The ESV is also a word for word. King James is in that word for word category, but it's somewhere in the middle. The, the new King James is actually closer to word for word than the old King James because, again, new writings and things have been found since then that we can now go back and rewrite and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not really the word for word. Here's the actual word for word. The, the second version of Bible that you'll see out there is a thought for thought. They don't take the actual words. It's the thought. This is what he meant. And so NIVs fall in uh, the thought for thought. There's many of them. I have a scale. I have a scale on my TikTok. You might have to scroll down a little bit, but there's a scale. Uh, I may repost it. And then the third version of Bibles that are out there are paraphrases. There's nothing wrong with any of these Bibles. You have to read all of them to maybe get an understanding, get you a concordance, ask the Holy Spirit. What fits kind of in this... Uh, paraphrase is the living bible which is the closest on the scale to the word for word the thought for thought like if you were to go in order the living bible is there because again it's just a paraphrase of the word for words it's just paraphrasing it's very close but it's not word for word the furthest thing that you can get away from and i highly suggest to people do not get this bible because it's nowhere close to even to a paraphrase, in my opinion, it's the Message Bible. It's not word for word. It's not thought for thought. In my opinion, it's not even a paraphrase. That that person just whatever. So to answer your question, answer your question, answer your question. Um, I read from the NASAB. I read from a Christian Jewish Bible that actually has Jewish words uh, mixed in. They use the word YHWH. They use Yahshua. They use like actual Hebrew words in place of words that we would have otherwise put Jerusalem. It says Jerusalem instead of David. It says David, right? It uses those different things. I uh, hope that helps. I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, Miss Monique. Yeah, Christ is Lord. So. I don't know what that question was meant for, if there was a, a, a trickery to it or a reason behind it. Uh, the word Christ, the definition for Christ is just anointed one or chosen one or savior. There was a promised savior all the way through the Bible, all the way from Genesis. There's indication that someone would come to relieve us from from all of the sin that Adam cost and you can find it in exodus and leviticus david samuel you you you, you pick a bible you, i mean you pick a, a, a book the saviors mentioned the anointed one the king isaiah talks about it jeremiah there are over 400 references that one day in the future the christ would come or the hamashiach Hamashiach, four syllables. You don't have to be super spiritual to use this word. It just simply means Christ or the anointed one, the chosen one. Hamashiach is coming. So when we say Jesus Christ, we're really saying Yahshua, which was his actual 
enunciated name, Yahshua Hamashiach. You're not super spiritual. That's his actual name. That's his name. My name is Ken Doughty. If you ever wanted to know how to pronounce that last name, my family pronounces it Dow T. Like bow, T, how, T. It's Dow T. I have been called Ken Dottery, Ken Dottery, Ken Dottery. They put E's and R's and all kind of other stuff in my name. And I politely will correct them. It's Dow T. That's how we pronounce my name. And if you want to be really particular, my name is Ken Dowdy Jr. My dad was the senior. My son is the third. I'm in the middle. Just That's my name. That's what my mama named me. That's what my friends call me, Ken Jr. Ken. I'm not Doherty. I don't know who Doherty is. Well, that's how we pronounce it. I thought it was Dottie. I thought it was Dottie, like daughter. Do no, it's Dow T. That's that's my name. I don't care what they how they pronounce it or where they want to respell it in Germany or in in Mandarin or uh, Swahili in Tagala. I don't care what y'all think my name is. I need you to pronounce Ken. Well, over here your name is going to be Cheyenne or whatever. No, no, I won't answer to that. I answer to Ken. Whole nother conversation there. He's still Jesus, the English equivalent. But I choose to use the name Yeshua because there's power in the name that his daddy gave him. He told Mary, you will name him Yeshua. Yeshua Hamashiach. All right. Is the brother still on here? I've been... Ezra. It's or it's Ezra. Have I been saying your name wrong? Oh, you you said you've been Eraza. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yahshua. I don't care. I don't even know the spelling is important as much as the pronunciation. Now, the spelling of father is important. His personal name was Y-H-W-H. I've said this before. I said quickly. If you're just new to my channel, uh, don't let anyone tell you that they know the pronunciation of the ancient letters y-h-w-h it's called a tremaya agaton i always pronounce that wrong tray my agaton those are the four syllables of the four letters that make up the the name that he gave abraham that he gave moses that's my personal name who do i tell him sent me it's not i am that i am that was again a translation it was like as close to a word for word that they could get the actual translation in a Jewish Bible is Y-H-W-H. No one can tell you that it's a Y or A or E. That's their, that's their assumption. I believe that the ancient pronunciation based on scripture was lost on purpose. Man could say that we we left out that name. We replaced it with the word Lord because we didn't want to dishonor the Lord. We didn't want to dishonor his name. And so even back to the ancient writings, we're talking about the 600, the very first Bibles in 500, the writings 300 years after Jesus had died, the writings started changing the name of YHWH to Lord, to Elohim. Uh, they, th they start changing it all together with God because they were afraid of dishonoring his name. They didn't want to bring shame to his name. They didn't even want to get close to blaspheming the name. So they replaced the name in all of the ancient Bibles with Lord. When we started writing Bibles in the 1600s, King James, you'll always know that the word was YHWH because it will say the Lord. Go look at your old Bibles. And it will always be capital L-O-R-D. L-O-R-D lets you know, capital L-O-R-D lets you know that it was actually supposed to be Y-H-W-H. That was their way of letting us know that this was the actual, like he used the name. David used the name Y-H-W-H. But we, we don't want to dishonor him. So we're going to put the Lord is my shepherd. When David really said Y-H-W-H is my shepherd, I shall not want. Does that make sense? So I say all that to say this. What was I saying? That 
The names are important. The names are important. This is name. I choose to say Yeshua HaMashiach. And the more and more and more I get closer to the Lord, the more and more I find myself calling on that name. Because at that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. He's not coming out of heaven as Jesus. He's coming out of heaven as Yahshua, Hamashiach. We're going to look up and say, ah, I even believe our own spirit man, our own spirit man will connect with the, the actual name. Just me. I could be wrong. He's going to come out the clouds and there won't be 1,500 different translations of the name. Like our spirit man that he's given us are all going to look up and say, it's Yahshua. Oh, he's coming on a cloud. It's just sure. Look at all the angels. Boom, like that. We're going to be taking up. All right. So let me help this brother real quick. I don't know if he's here. I don't know. Do, do y'all want to hear this explanation? I don't know if, if, if it's either here nor there now. He wanted to hear the explanation. Are you, are you still here? If not, we're going to close this out. We've been on here since 6 a.m. No, no water, no coffee, no breakfast. If I wasted your time, I appreciate you just even listening. I know some of you use this as a podcast, as your radio uh, morning uh, uh, listening. So I'm, I'm a priest. I'm going to read a few more comments and then I'm going to close out of here if he's not going to show up. A lot of people come, they ask questions and they leave. Um, and we all do it. We scroll, we scroll, we scroll, not interested, not interested, not interested. And then the Holy Spirit will stop you. Sneezy said, what was the beginning of God? He is, there is no beginning. He's always been God. It, it, and it's, it's not something we can put our minds to. There's no logic to it. You can't understand it. Like that's why they call him the ancient of days. Like before days even began, before time began, he was the ancient one. He's always existed. He always was. He always is. That's why they try to translate his name as I am or I was. I always will be. I'm, I'm just. I'm the created one. I'm the creator. Cato, one last call. Let me read these chats and then I'm going to get out of here. He said, why does it say son of David have mercy on me? That's an easy ex explanation. I, I, I can get to it quickly if he shows up. Ah, Lord, thank you for this day. This will be this will be on YouTube later today. You can go back and find everything we've done. Our prayer will be in one section. And then I have to download it again and cut it, edit it, and put this section in the... Um, All right, I needed to hear this, this, that, and the other. Answer my question. I had for a few years. Praise the Lord. It's been a blessing. Um, I haven't cut them off yet. I'm just, I'm just looking at the chats. There was Felicia's comment. Much respect. Um, three grandsons. Praying for them. What Bible do I have? Can you say Christ? This is good. Um, all right. Off the record. So we're done. Can we can we say we're done? Thomas Chain Bible. That's a good one. Have you heard of that Bible? I have. I have. It's a good Bible. Um, so it's so Yah yeah, Yahweh. Yeah, we've said that. We, we created the vowel sounds. Think about that just for a moment. We came up with the alphabet. We told E, you're going to say E and I and E. We told, we told A that A would be A and R. We, we, we pronounce. You go to a whole nother uh, 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 language group and the German language pronounces letters differently. And you go over to another group and they choose to take the same letter and and all these different sounds so man chooses the language that's 
in their culture. This goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel. We don't have time to explain that, where everyone spoke the ancient language. We don't know the ancient language. And the Bible says that as they were trying to reach the Lord, this is where the two or three come together. They could probably accomplish anything. They can ask for anything. I'll be there. And they built this tower. The Bible says that as they continue to build this tower to the Lord, this is why I, I disagree with people who argue about how was the pyramids built. They built a tower that almost touched heaven. Now, they were going to literally touch heaven, but they were building high. They were coming together. They were on the same page. And for whatever reason, the Lord said, not, not right now. This, this isn't the dispensation for you all to do this. And he allowed their groups to be broken up and their languages to be formed. And so from there, we have all these different sounds and language. And even from there, languages have evolved and split. And so when we say Yahweh, that's how us in America us in the English language have chosen. What about the other 200 languages? Have you ever, have we ever thought about like, what are the other 200 languages? What do they translate it? Y H W H to be? Cause it all comes from the, the ancient Hebrew. What vowels did they put in there? How do they pronounce his name? So if you looked at all four letters, the Y is actually pronounced. If you got a, a, a Hebrew dictionary, I'm, I apologize. I'm going long here. I'm done. The Hebrew dictionary uh, uses or says that, that that letter, that letter Y in all of the Hebrew is Yod. But it is not pronounced Yod sometimes. If you leave it by itself, it's Yod. Y-O-D, Yod. But then when you see Jerusalem, it's not Yod, Jerusalem. When you see Jehovah, it's not yod hova When you see Joseph or Yosef, it's Yosef. It's not yod Osef. And so just like our Z and our CH, and uh, sounds can change. So the Y is Yod. The H is Ha. Ha. Or He. Depending on, again, how you read it. Hey. The W has a V sound. There is no W. The, the, the W in Hebrew, go do your own research. The W has a V sound. Just like some of our syllables, you look at the letter and you say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound that way. Confusing us as kids. That's where we hear in, when we grew up, Jehovah. Because the ancient text tried to get very close to the word for word. It made a V sound, Jehovah. So where did we get a W from? Because it could go either way, depending on how you spell it and what you use. There's no J in the, in the Hebrew language, so we don't even say Jehovah right. It's probably Yehovah. But wait, is it an O or an A? Is it Yah or Yo? Who knows? You have some people say Yehovah. Some people say Yahweh. Some people pronounce the V. Some people pronounce the W. It's lost. And I don't think the Holy Spirit is telling any particular one person or two people or groups. This is the right way to say it. Here's why I say all this. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. What he actually did in his all creation, he saw the big picture. This is the big picture. I'm allow my name, the pronunciation, the letters will still be there, but the pronunciation will be lost because I'm going to send someone whose name you can pronounce. And the actual definition of his name is YHWH saves. The name Yeshua or the name Jesus, if you go look it up in a dictionary or the Bible, it means saves, that he sa that God saves. YHWH, like the actual name, the ancient name saves. The ancient name put a plan in place. The ancient name are one. Father, may they be one as you and I are one. So even the name Yeshua is connected to the name of God. Y-H-W-H saves. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Yeshua to you? The one who saves. The chosen one. The Hamashiach. The anointed one. All right. Let's get out of here. Let me scroll. Make sure I didn't 
miss anything. Yeah, that diagnosis that you had, and we talked about this I think in the, in the in the private chat. You don't have to live with the, that diagnosis. You have to believe. All the way to the very end, you believe. You you go as far as God and life allows you to go with the understanding that I'm healed, I'm free, I'm cured. You can say what you want to say, you can say what the charts say, but my belief is that I'm healed Lord she's healed all of our, it's the same prayer I pray for all of our friends who have cancer we believe that they're already healed we believe they already have the victory we're just waiting we're waiting on the Lord to follow through in his timing he's not a man that he should lie set a reminder for yourself to at least bring water tomorrow <laughs> I will I've been doing this a year and I forget every time to bring water in here never a waste of time I do need to stay hydrated I'm going to go in here and get a big old big old cup of water alright um, you're sad about last night's bible study yeah yeah I'm so my for those that are my friends y'all can be my friends on facebook come on like this is relationship God is teaching us and showing us that this goes beyond just church or building this is about people's lives so if you want to find me on Facebook same name me and my wife kissing on YouTube me and my wife kissing Instagram Twitter me and my wife kissing um, not perfect but that's our life so find me on Facebook what we do on Facebook for those that want to be a part of our Bible studies on Tuesday uh, I actually open up messenger and you didn't get to hear it last night if you've been new to our channel, but Jamie, Gracie, Crystal, many others, we have conversations like they get to be. A, last night was just me and my wife talking. Sometimes my wife has work or she's busy. Uh, and so it's just me and whoever can jump on Messenger. And so last night, Messenger crashed on me. And so Miss Jamie couldn't come on and be a part. So I apologize for that. I hope your son did well at the baseball game. Monique said, I'm so glad the Holy Spirit stopped. Yeah. All right. Good. My husband was with me when I said I was free. That's beautiful. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. I'm just I'm just uh, scrolling through these last couple of chats. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm going to let you all go. Can I, can I ask you to do one thing? We're done. We're done with prayer. We're done with the after conversation. This is just Ken now. This is Ken personally talking just one on one. Have nothing to do with the ministry. Have nothing to do. Well, uh, no, it has nothing to do with the, this ministry of prayer. This is just me talking. I don't know who's still on here. Uh, I, I have somewhat of announcement, but I um it's not an announcement. I'm going to let the Lord do whatever he wants to do. So this is just personal time now. Okay. So don't, don't connect this to prayer. Don't connect this to the Bible studies. Don't connect this to anything we said. Um, part of what God is doing in my life right now. I'm just sharing. Can I just share? Are you okay with that? Can I, this don't connect. I'm not even putting this on, on any YouTube. This is just intimate. Now this is private. Let me see who's still on here. Okay. Felicia. No, all right. My wife's still all right. So this is just me sharing. They said share. Go ahead and share. We feel like family, don't we? Y'all, y'all have come to know us as family. So uh Ezra, real quick. If you are unaware that you haven't forgiven someone, can you still? Yeah, yeah, because the Holy Spirit will work Ezra over time. Like the hurt that I had in my heart toward my coaches, I didn't know. The Lord revealed over time. I did. I was unaware. It took a trigger. It took a situation. Somebody mentioned something, and I'm like, wait a minute. I, I'm still mad. I forgot I was mad at you. Have you, have you ever done that? I forgot I was mad at you. Yeah, God forgive you. He'll show you. We're still here on earth, so he's going to give you time, brother. So, 2019, roughest spot in my life ever, ever. 
ever, ever. Lost my dad. Me and my wife weren't on the same page. Relationship with my kids was topsy-turvy. There was some other things going on in my personal life, and then I lost my job. Job that I thought I'd be, with, be at for, for 40 years. They let 10,000 of us go. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I work for, but I thought that they would do me right, and they didn't. But I learned from it. Two months later, the Lord blessed me with another job. Thought I'd be there for at least another 15 years. The name of that company was a well-known company. It's a lab company. I had a call center. I was a senior manager and I did really well. The company decided that they didn't need our department anymore. So all seven of my supervisors that reported to me, including the vice president that I reported to, and the 200 plus frontline agents dismissed last day. December 8th, got a phone call. Ken, today's your last day. I need you to announce to your employees that a few of them, today is their last day. And over the course of the next two months, some of their, their last days will be February. That was February. I mean, that was Jan December of 22. I didn't have a job from December of 22 all the way to September of last year. I started this ministry. The Lord put it on my heart January 1st, get online, start preaching. I said, how? My wife said, the, the masses, the, you heard the Lord's? I said, I heard masses. She said, then it has to be the internet because you can't go to enough churches to, to speak to the masses. The Lord has done everything ever since. So I still needed to work. I said, Lord, I can do your work. I'll, I'll sacrifice, do whatever you need me to do. Uh, but I still got a mortgage. I got two kids that, that, that are in college. I got two weddings that I'm probably going to have to start saving for here in the next couple of years. And we have our own needs and wants. The Lord said, trust me. So we started the ministry last January. I was without a job January to September of 23. Stay with me here. The Lord finally blessed me with a job. I started working good income. Everything went well. For that season of my life, the Lord has sustained us, was able to start saving again, start able to, to get things back to where I thought they were. March of this year, that company also surplused me. Three good jobs over four years. The Lord said that was your time. I questioned the Lord at the, at the beginning in 19. I had a few questions last year, but it was very clear and obvious to me what he was doing, what his will was in my life. And as I got closer and closer to the Lord, the more I kept saying, I'm listening, I'm listening. Samuel, Samuel, Ken, Ken, I'm listening. I'm listening. Your servant listens. And that's the genesis of what whatever this is. We don't even have a name for it. We've never taken an offering. We don't do cash apps. There are no seed offerings. We don't beg you to fast and pray. We just we just follow the word. Fast forward to my announcement. I felt that the Lord has been sharing with me to, to be done with corporate. I've been praying about it. I've been saying, do I need to go back and find a, guy, a job? I've been filling out applications. I have a master's degree with 25 years of leadership abilities been to the philippines nine times i've led masses and groups of people project plans you name it i've done it i'm a pretty good leader i'm energetic i have the motivation i know how to how to organize things and performance management coach people motivate people i was an au coach for the 10 years that i coached my son and daughter while working uh, at the other two jobs know how to multitask keep things in order i got all this skill I'm just going to be online and preach the rest of my life. Okay, that's what you want. That's fine. We still got to eat. My wife's been holding it down. So, and he started dropping things into my spirit years ago. And I've always told myself, when I get old and retire, I'm going to start going after those things. When I get to that point, when I'm about 58, 59, start drawing social security, get close to retirement. All these visions that I had, writing books and building apartments and doing this and doing that. And I got like a list. I'll start them then. 
Well, little did I know, perhaps, that the Lord was tugging at me in 19. Now, maybe I didn't listen. I don't know. And then in 22, when it happened last year, I was looking for a job doing this, looking for a job doing. I'd come on here, be online with you all like I am now. Then I go in my office, do a Bible study to myself, and then I would look for a job the next four hours. And every day I was looking for jobs. My wife would tell you, I filled out so many applications. Got close a couple of times, third interviews. Maybe the Lord was just encouraging me, motivating me, but I finally landed that job. When I lost my job in March, you know what I said? Lord, do you want me to work? Like what? I got to do something. He's been telling me all those things that I've put in your heart. I want you to fulfill them now. Not like tomorrow now, but over the span of the next couple of years, I'm going to start using you. You got books inside of you. You got businesses inside of you. You got plans, plans, plans. I'm getting ready to manifest those plans. We're done with Bible study. I'm not soliciting on behalf of the Lord. I'm not turning his house into a den of thieves. That's not my purpose. We're just personally sharing. Now, this is my personal time. The Lord knows I've set a line of demarcation between ministry prayer and now what I'm sharing with you. So I wrote a book. I wrote my very first book. I give him the credit. I give him the, the, the glory. It took me three to four weeks to write some things that have been on my heart for years. It's a small devotional. I say small. It's 102 pages for men. It's a men's devotional. I started a website. Got an LLC. Got my social media set up. And I'm going to let the Lord work over time. My second book is on its way. I'm working on it. A, a book for couples, a devotional for couples. And all the books are going to be very simple in its format. Lots of scriptures, some commentary from me, and then a couple of questions in the devotion to help you think and start the process on whatever that topic is. On my current uh, TikTok, and then I created a new TikTok for that account, for the, the ministry, I mean, the uh, the LLC, that book is available. My first published book is on the way. I haven't even gotten my own copy yet because it's on the way. If that's something you're interested in, for getting for a man in your life, Ken is putting it out there as an option. You don't have to. Just check it out. The second thing the Lord has confirmed, he's confirmed it multiple times, is that all of this skill, all of this information, all of the know-how of how to lead and manage and develop and coach people both on the court and in business. And then you take the, the spiritual aspect. I started the second LLC yesterday. Abundant life coaching. I'm going to attempt to be a life coach. I'm going to set up opportunities uh, to, and I want to thank Sister Pittman, Sister Mary Lou, my wife, uh, for their encouragement, and even Sister Veronica for for seeing and hearing and being obedient to the support that the Lord is saying, go, go. Go do what the Lord tells you to do. Go do what the Lord tells you to do. And so as another means or a way of ensuring that my family is taken care of, those who need developmental coaching in life, uh, I'm still setting up the, the matrix to where it's affordable. I'm not trying to rip anyone off. Uh, we'll set up actual plans of how to, to get there. I want to start with young men, but I'll also take uh, any any anybody who wants to be a part of uh, an actual process, a, a plan, a coaching mechanism where you know I have goals, I have visions. But the difference between my life coaching process, and this is what the Lord showed me, just, just in the last 48 hours, or well, actually I talked to Sister Pittman on Friday, so between Friday and now, that it's all Christ-centered. In the, in the state of Oklahoma, I cannot give financial advice as a life coach. I cannot give uh, counseling advice. But I can still guide you. The, the laws are really gray. I do really good in the gray. Uh, I've done multiple conversations and sessions where... Uh, and here's what I want to be sure of. I told the Lord this. I do not want to make his house 
a house of den, a den of thieves and robbers. I do not want to, to, to cause any kind of stain on this. So I'm being very careful to keep the ministry over here and those LLCs over here. The life coach part of it is going to have some spiritual aspects, but it will be based upon what the Lord wants for you. We'll pray, we'll, we'll intercede, uh, but there will be daily or weekly, monthly sessions just like a coach would in a in an office just like your boss would sit you down once a week and have a one-on-one -on -one. the only difference is we're doing the one-on-one -on -one with your life and so for everyone who has questions about their purpose that goes beyond just prayer we're going to continue to pray it won't cost you anything i don't need an offering i'm not asking for a seed i'm not asking for an investment I'm just sharing with this group here for those that have been very, very supportive of what the Lord is doing. Uh, I got more books coming out. I'm going to come out with a teen devotional. I'm going to come out with a devotional uh, for, for adolescents. I even went so far to say, Lord, even the children need maybe even a coloring book with some hope, with some purpose. And I, I, I'm just going to be, so I'm going to sit back and see what the Lord says. But I, I thought it important maybe right now to share this with you, uh, that you would pray for me. I never come on here in all my time of coming on here and ask for prayer for us. I mean, I've prayed for us. I've said, keep my wife, my son, surgery, things like that. But if there was ever a time that I needed your, your person, that you get to pray for me. Pray that the Lord continues to, to show me his will. I'm not asking for blessings on the business. I'm not asking that he manifest and multiply the LLC. I'm not asking for client, none of that. Lord, help Ken to hear you. Help him to, to understand what it is he's supposed to be doing right now. Because as a man, you want to supply for your family. As a, as a husband, you want to make sure your wife has her needs and her wants. You don't ever want to be in a position as a man, Ezra, uh, not being able to supply, but trust in the Lord. I think my brother Ron understands this. Many men understand this. So just keep brother Ken in your prayers that he just listens to the Lord. And if, if you're interested, perhaps in the book, it's available. My first book got its own website but i also published it here uh, the name of that llc is walk by faith worldwide the website is w by f dot site that I, the, the fact that i was even able to come up with that on the, the lord gave me that walk by faith not by sight that, that, that's the actual website when you think through it w by f dot site s-i-t-e check it out Tell me what you think. I'm open to improvements. I'm open to any kind of feedback. Brother Ken, you should probably change this. This was hard. This was confusing. Thank you. Thank you. Prayer tomorrow, 6 a.m. Can you, can your wife pin it? Can your wife pin it, please? What, what do you mean by that, Shani? I'm not following. Can she also write a, a book? Is that what you're asking me? Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can comment it here. See if I can put it in the chat. Did that come through right there? No. So I'm keeping it separate, Shawnee. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm so I'm so respectful for what the Lord is doing. I don't want it to have nothing to do with this. I've already established this as holiness, righteousness, prayers. And so you won't see any of this in this. It's it's somewhere else. I've already created, I don't want to use the word brand. But we've already created here what this is. This is Ken Dowdy being used by God for prayers ministry. Whereas uh, 
the three or four, and I got four more LLCs in my head that I, I'm going to work over time that the Lord would expand if he says the, the same. But those are that, that's separate. That, that's that's over there. That's over there. Um, when when we when I worked at uh, Mall Bell, uh, Mall Bell was Mall Bell, but then they segregated Singular Wireless. And then when we became AT and T, they say they segregated Cricket, they segregated Direct TV, they segregated Warner Brothers. It wasn't AT and T. Uh, studios. It was Warner Brothers. They didn't change the name. It was segregated. They wanted to prepay to stay prepay, and they didn't want anyone to disguise uh, to discover that that Cricket and and if you read the fine print, you figure out that Cricket and AT and T is the exact same network, exact same phones, exact same people behind the scenes running it, but they segregated it. I'm trying to keep it segregated. I want to I want to keep it whole. I don't want the Lord in any way. I'm almost sounding like the people that wrote the Bible. I'm changing. I don't want. I don't want to mess up the name, YHWH. So we're gonna just leave it out. We're gonna we're gonna leave the business out of this. But from time to time in sessions like this, and I made you saw what I did, right? I I was clear, Lord. I was clear in saying that this has this is Ken's personal time now. This has nothing to do with prayer. This I we we're finished with prayer. We're finished with Bible study. This is just Ken. Sitting at his house, inviting some friends over. We having a barbecue. What you been up to? What you working on? What are you working on? This is that conversation. Does that make sense? I don't want anyone to think that I'm soliciting right now on the gospel. I don't want to. Be, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. I, but I, just like everybody else, got a business. I'm a reseller. I'm a re. I'm a resale. In the sense of not people who've already worn it. They're still brand new, but Christian. Uh, uh, T-shirts and hats and hoodies uh, on that website. The the books that we sell will be added to that website. And the more books that we write, I, I've encouraged my son and my daughter to write. I said, we can sell it on the website. We got an LLC. I got a publisher now. And so I told my daughter, I said, like, pin, pin something, write it. And we'll, we'll have a section at some point of books. And you can go look at all the books that we write. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Anything else before we go? Comments, questions, thoughts? Again? No, it's not in my bio. I don't want to put it in. But, but here, here, let me look up, look up, look, work, uh, look that up on TikTok. Let me see here. Let me see how, to, how I can do this. If you look this up on TikTok, I think the name of my TikTok is the same. Yes. Look up, look this up on TikTok. And that's where I'm going to start posting for that LLC. And then when I do my second LLC, which is called Abundant Life Coaching, I'm going to create, I'm in the process of today, uh, creating the website. I'm going to create the social media, put together a pricing plan. Uh, all of my uh, metrics and goals and things for people who want to be a part. If you know somebody who needs a life coach that needs motivation at a very, very fair, reasonable rate, because it's our, it's my time that I'll be given uh, from about, I said, I'll do 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m. every day, 30 minute slots as often as that person needs, probably like a weekly, like you would sit down with your boss every week and go over how you've done. What, what are my performance metrics? Did I hit my goals? What's what's what are my targets? What's my incentive? What's my bonus looking like? Oh, we're just going to do that for life. Where are you at spiritually? Where are you at financially? Where are you at in your personal life? Where are you at in your social life? Where, where, where are you at with your parents and, and those relationships that should be important to you? Where are you in your giving back to humanity and to your society? And we're going to have goals for every area of your life. And over time, as a coach, as a life coach, when I did AEU, my goal every practice was to push the kids. They became teenagers to be the best versions of themselves. Well, I've been doing this my whole life. It only makes sense for those who need it. You just put your name on the website. You think I should? I don't because I don't want to I don't want to merge the I don't want people to. Um, what's the word, Alex? 
I want to keep it pure. I don't want people thinking that, oh, there he, he, okay, there he is, one of them preachers. I knew it. I knew it sooner or later, sooner or later, he was going to start asking people for money. That's, that's, well, that's my, I don't want to call it a fear. I don't want to call it a fear. That's my concern. Teresa said, put your name on your site. Okay, okay, that's two people that said it. There's three. Put it in the bio. On, on the uh, TikTok, or y'all talking about my actual website? I assume y'all on my site right now. Put it on, put it there. Jamie said, okay. I'm trying. Yeah, I hope you hear my heart. And do y'all see? Y'all, y'all know me by now, right? Y'all, you all have figured me out. My wife know me better than anybody. Her and I were talking about this last night, and so uh, y'all know who I am. I'm not trying to get over on anybody, but I'm also being bold and courageous in what the Lord has put on my heart. I've been praying for y'all to be bold and courageous. Been asking the Lord to do whatever He needs to do in y'all's life. So I'm saying, okay, what you doing in my life though? What are you, what are you doing with me? So. It looks like a vote. You all are all saying put the name on the website. Okay. I'll figure that out. And as I'm building my second website today, Abundant Life Coaching Worldwide, um, I'll find a way to ensure, or they'll definitely know it's me uh, that, that's out there as, as the life coach. And if you know anybody that perhaps would need a life coach, start putting it out there. Word of mouth is the best marketing tool of all time. If you order anything from that website, it takes about a week. Or I me mean, from my 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 other LLC, Walk by Faith, um, two weeks to get ordered because I got to get it from my supplier. Even my book that's being produced, uh, I've had uh, for those who've been in management or leadership. You know, uh, there's the there's two methods, two processes, methodologies of how you can store inventory. Shawnee, you understand this. Business owners, you understand this. Uh, I don't have the investment dollars to go buy 200 books and have them sit here and wait and then wait for you all to order books. And so as you order a book, then I order the book from the manufacturer. Right now, I got about 10 books on the way. So in case somebody were to order, then I'll be ready to to send those out. But in the, in the meantime, it takes about two weeks to get these orders in. Uh, my other supplier, probably suppliers you're well aware of, but just I'm just doing it myself. That's all business is anyway, is people purchasing stuff and then selling it for a margin. So I get the T-shirt for X price. I'm able to sell you the T-shirt for five. Well, what do you think I'm getting a T-shirt for? You probably know the site. I ain't. I got nothing to hide, but it's part of the, with the process of what the Lord is trying to do in my life. I've taken 25 years of working for AT&T, Quest Diagnostics, uh, NWN Carousel running an AU team, being a part of multiple churches and putting all that together and saying, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I could be my own CEO. Lord, do you want me to be a CEO? I'm a CEO. I'm a president. My own company. All right. Any other advice? This is humbling. That I'm even sharing this with you because I did not want to share. And it's only looked like 50 people going to hear this anyway. So I, I still feel safe and not feeling like I'm trying to mix the two. I, any other advice y'all would give Brother Ken? Since y'all are on there looking at my site, give me some feedback. I did. I looked at KDP. They want 70% of your book. Um, any book that's $9.99 or less. You keep 70%. They only want 30%. But if your book costs more than $9.99, you only get like 34% of the sale. That's why so many people's books on Amazon are 40 bucks, 25 bucks, because they're trying to recoup the 10% profit margin that they would have got if they sold it on their own website or if they would have sold it, uh, you know, in a store or something like that or their own, you know. Uh, so I, I've looked into that. I'm going to keep looking into that. I am because there's some opportunity within the Amazon where you have millions and millions of eyeballs. But the other challenge, the other con, or I guess you could call it a, a challenge, you know, weakness there on Amazon is that everybody's on Amazon right now. 
So so to find my title, uh, I'd probably be on page four or five, which then gets into to marketing dollars, right? Advertising dollars, two different things. If you've ever been in the business, advertising and marketing, two different things. And so how much investment dollars am I starting to put aside? So I have a budget that as money comes in, uh, how much I'll spend for TikTok ads, Amazon ads, Google's Google, Google ads, SEO opportunities where I get integrated. I hate to be that guy, too. I hate going to YouTube and an ad pop up. I hate scrolling TikTok and I'm interrupted because of an ad. So I but I get both sides of it. When I was at at and they spent more money in advertising than they did on their employees. Billions. We sponsored everything at at and the NCAA, the PGA, the NBA, you, you name it. at and was trying to put their name on everything. They just wanted their name to be big. They were losing money, but spending money to, to put their name out there. So I got to be strategic. I got to be wise. I got to listen to the Holy Spirit on when and how to advertise, when to market, when to use influencers, when to uh, give the book away for free to maybe one of the NBA players here in Oklahoma City. And then that person uses word of mouth. Like, I'm just trying to listen right now. I did consider an audio book. Believe it or not, one of my LLCs is voiceover. Uh, part of this big plan is to use this voice that the Lord has given me to to do audio books and maybe even some, some voiceover. I got like six or seven different voices and ranges that the Lord I can use, but yes, I have I actually tried to do an audio book for someone about eight years ago. And Amazon tore me up. The decibel levels wasn't high enough and you got to bring this up. And I still, this that matched this other chapter. And I got so discouraged. I apologized to the person that asked me to do it, that I wasted three months of their time because my home studio just wasn't good enough. So then do I rent a studio? It was an investment in buying the actual equipment. I can download different apps, but my computer runs so slow. Can't, my computer can't even keep Messenger up, Jamie. My computer can't even run Messenger and Facebook and TikTok at the same time. So I got to invest in another computer. So there's a whole other piece and layers there. But yes, I'm going to do my own audio on my book. And then I also want to be the voice of someone else's book. Because I can change these different octaves and sound like I even thought about it. I said, Lord, show I'd like to do like a Nickelodeon or a Disney voiceover for a cartoon, a video game voiceover. I've had so many people tell me, man, your voice, you could be in radio. Well, the Lord has to open that door. I got to get an agent. I got to have somebody out there selling my voice. I got to have time to do it. And if I did that, then I probably wouldn't be here with you all. What's robbery? You said that's robbery, sis. What's what? What's robbery? Did I? Uh, are the prices prices too high? I'm just reading comments. We just talking right now. I do have PayPal. I don't have Zelle. I do have a business bank account through a company. Um, all of it is separate. Again, all that is separate. I did find a publisher, Lulu. If you got a book idea, uh, I did some research. It's like five publishers out there that will help you self-publish. They have different price ranges and the different websites. And so when I did my research the last three weeks, Lulu was the best for me, the best publisher where you still end up with a pretty good margin. They'll produce your book. Let you write your book, upload your book, and then you set your own margin, what you want it sold for. They'll sell it on their website. They sell it on some of their other distributed websites, and then you can sell it wherever you want to. So the distributor or the publisher, the publisher is Lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, which was also an odd, like another, like for me, it was a sign. It was like, okay, I'm listening because L-U means a lot in my life on another level it's the college we went to so the door wide open um order whatever i i'm word of mouth send it out you guys get to be my influencers 
You get to be my first influencers. Thank you for listening and sticking around. Shawnee, you don't know this, but you you were an encouragement. Remember that conversation we had? I was already thinking and, and working behind the scenes. So I was really investigating, asking you questions. Uh, Sophie, Sophie doesn't know this. Sophie on here, Agent Sophie. She's not on here right now. I have to give her credit next time I see her. But she penned a book about a year ago on behalf of a friend that's no longer with us. Uh, and she published the book. And I asked her questions. I was inquiring, like, well, how did you do it? And who did you use? And I ordered her book. It was a good book. She, she, she That set, that was a seed. Some of you got books inside of you. You got a story. I'll sell it on my website. I'll help you publish world walk by faith worldwide publishing walk by faith worldwide i'll help you with your manuscript i'll even help you life coach and we'll figure it all out together how about that so it's not misconstrued with real scram scammers people would try to copyright it yeah so there's a copyright and i, I i'm in the process of you know that whole piece. So every every book you write, you got to purchase an ISBN. The good news with Lulu, Lulu will give you the ISBN number if you stay within their framework versus having to go purchase a separate ISBN number. And then the copyright is separate. I think each copyright, you can get a block of copyrights from the copyright company for X amount. But yeah, it's, it's, there's some layers to this. It's a lot. But when your heart is in it, you run running toward the finish line with everything you got. You wake up every morning. You stay up late at night. Anyone who's ever hustled, anyone who has a, ever had a dream in their heart, you know that you're going to go after it. If you ever worked on your master's degree or your Ph.D., you're putting in the time. You're putting in the effort. I told the Lord this. I gave AT&T so much time. I gave Quest so much time. I gave the other job, NWN, so much of my time. Overtime, before time, in airports away from my family for them the lord said now do for you what you did for them if you can give that much energy and effort for another company how about you work on yourself this is the first time in my life i get to invest in me with the lord's help i take no credit i take no credit at all but if i told y'all all the time i would my wife would be like babe it's it's six o'clock are you are you on your way home? We're getting ready to do X, Y, Z. Should we wait on you? And I'm like, babe, I got two more, two more projects, two more emails I'm working on, two more updates I got to send over. It'd be 8 o'clock. I don't work from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. What kind of life was that for another company that ended up letting me go? I spent so many time, so many months and weeks away from my family investing in them thinking that they were investing in me so guess what i'm getting ready to do now i go back there in my office when i'm done here and while the 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 tiktok is uploading i'm i'm writing i'm either i, I got time set out spend an hour or two writing spend an hour or two on the marketing and the advertisement of the business and then spend the next hour or two on the next business I wanted. I looked at affiliated marketing. I looked at how to drop ship. I've looked at so many different things. I've even had these ideals. I mean, I get my hair twisted all the time by the my my, my lovely wife. Um, I use a product called Malay. I don't know if any of you ladies know the. It's a purple and white bottle, and those are the products. It's, it's no alcohol. It's supposed to be all natural. It's helped my hair grow kept my hair stay healthy i'm not even a marketer for them yet but i thought how cool would it be to, to have my wife do my hair on camera marketing them and people buying the product the wife is like nah, i don't know if i want to be on camera doing your hair that's us time and it is that's been her time but i can still market the product i can do a before and after that's one of the llc's one of the other businesses that i i want to do affiliate marketing for malay i probably sell a lot of product especially when i get a fresh stew when it's looking right after the wife does it y'all never ever see it right after she does it it is fly i'll be feeling myself 
I'll be feeling myself. And I turn around and tell her thank you. Because she didn't have to spend those two and a half hours once a month. Baby, if you still on here, thank you in front of everybody. Right? So I got all these ideals. I got all these things he's put in my heart. I'm just asking the Lord how, when, what's next. So pray for me. I'm going to read the rest of y'all's messages and I'm going to let y'all go. Yeah, I'm a CEO, Felicia. I mean, just even hearing it out loud, like I, I, I run my own company, two companies right now, Walk by Faith and Abundant Life. Every company that I start is going to have a scripture. It'll be very unique and hope significant that people recognize when they see that brand. That's a Christian brand without me having to tell you it's a Christian brand. Like Christians will pick up on he will give you life and life more abundantly for we walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm the key. You know where it is? Uh, look at my office. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my son. Katrina said, just keep going. Any other opinions that is not God ordained? That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you see now? And again, some of you probably picked this up. Like you said, I've been picking up. I've been picking up on you, brother. Ken in the spirit, even our own Bible studies and the lessons I've been teaching about Samuel and what we've been doing on Tuesday nights. God always ministers to the minister first. He, he always speaks to the preacher first, the prophet first, the teacher first before he teaches the, the the others. And so all these lessons I've been talking about hearing God's voice, I'm talking to myself. All these messages on loving your enemies and so God will bless you and, and having a, a, a free path to everything he has. I'm talking to me. So you're right. I'm not taking anybody's opinion, especially if they don't read the Bible. All right. Uh, what other comments y'all have here for Brother Ken here? And I'm going to let y'all go. Just don't put it on YouTube. Don't put what on YouTube? My audio book? And sis, what did you mean by... Uh, yes, I know people in radio doesn't pay well. Yeah, I was thinking more like a Disney movie. A Nickelodeon cartoon flying to California once a week to do voiceover and coming back to Oklahoma. I'm not trying to move to California. And nowadays you can just do stuff remotely. I can go to a studio here in Oklahoma, upload my audios and send the tracks uh, to those companies. Everybody else doing voiceovers. I got a, the Lord gave me this voice. I can't sing, but I can I can change my voice. I was saying that the Amazon commissions are robbery. You're right. Yeah, they are. They are. They they Walmart all over again. You hear you used to hear stories how uh people would have a product, they take it to Walmart, and Walmart said, No, we're not selling it. We're gonna sell it for our price. And they want to sell their product so bad that they start losing money just to get it into Walmart, hoping that one day they could raise their price. Amazon can sometimes be the new Walmart. Yeah, the percentage that the company gets is robbery. That's what my wife said. One day, maybe you can voice over your own Christian cartoon show. Oh. Okay. I've never thought about writing a cartoon. I have written a play. I wrote a play back in 99, sent it to Tyler Perry in 2000, didn't hear anything, and it's just been sitting there in the office. I probably need to rewrite it for the relevance of text messaging and and Twitter and all. Like, none of that stuff was even out when I wrote my play. Sat down with a group of people. We read it. Thought the Lord was getting ready to do something, but it, he had different plans for me. Start having kids, start working, touring around the country where the play was out, out of the out of the plans at that time. So we'll see what the Lord says. 
Felicia said, I'm in tears about how happy I feel at all of the possibilities. Well, yeah. thank you, Felicia. Thank you. I mean, that means you all have been like trusting us this entire way. Uh, like I said, we feel like family. We, we talk so often. For those that have been with us even just recently in the last month, Yeah. Should I can teach classes one on one? Yeah, I, I could. Monique Rodriguez sold Malay. She's majority. Oh, I didn't know she she sold it. But she's still the majority majority owner. It's interesting. If you feel like you're the expert on any topic. Just thank you glad for this unofficial ministry. Yeah, it's unofficial. Didn't know I'd be announcing this today, but you guys, we, we're on here, so you're fam. You won't make money off of YouTube, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to like be a, a real high niche uh, YouTuber or influencer. My son has taught me a lot even in his, the little bit of time that he's been on TikTok, he's had some videos hit a million or 400K and and it's his niche. He's a young man. He doesn't show his shirt. You know, he doesn't take his shirt off doing any of that. He just, he knows his niche. It's basketball. And for whatever reason, one of his videos just went way up and he gets stuff all the time from people that said, hey, will you do this on your 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 uh, uh, TikTok, and he'll turn it down because he's like, "That's not who I am. I'm not selling roller skates. I'm not selling eyeglasses. I don't wear you know. I don't wear sunglasses like that." But depending on where he's at, he doesn't go to YouTube. He doesn't go to Instagram because the algorithms are just a little bit different. So, Shiny said, "You got this. Thank you. Have a blessed day, sis." He's giving you a gift and a tongue. It should be shared. Appreciate that. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the motivations. I could use a Bible cart, Bible story cartoon for my son. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. Somebody said, can I have some advice? I don't know what your question is. The best thing you can do solve a problem and teach others that's life that's life that is thank you sister gracie thank you all right listen we're gonna get off of here appreciate you all tomorrow 6 a.m morning prayer have a good one lord thank you